I will not let you go until you bless me. And I said, what is your name? And he says, Jacob. He said, thou shalt no longer be called Jacob, but Israel. For as a prince, you have power with God and prevail. The Bible says he touched his thigh. And the sun arose and he called the name of the place Peniel. And he says, I have seen God face to face and my life is spared. Give us revelations, O God. Let the spirit of revelation through the word, through visions, through encounters, that while you are speaking, O God, let your word become images. Let your word become pictures. And let it glue upon our spirits until we become what you are revealing. Ubangi chika isaya na kirma masuna ya ubangi chika tonight and let your body be built let your church be edified let your bride be beautified in the name of Jesus Christ God bless you please be seated I want you to be very sensitive to the seasons that were entering in the spirit I believe with all my heart that we're like a woman in travail and God is birthing a lot of things we must be very sensitive don't be careless with your discernment when you come to the house of God like this let your spirit be open the devil will try to distract you with your challenges whatever just throw them away and let your heart be fixed on him in the name of Jesus Christ thank you I just want to say a few things before before we get to the word tonight um, I thought of recent at the faithfulness of God over my life and over this ministry and um, I've had to fight tears because of the overwhelming blessings of God I receive text messages every day our lines are jammed every day people calling from around the world expressing their gratitude for what the Word of God in and through this ministry is doing in their lives the miracles the signs the wonders um, you have to be evil to pretend like the things that are said don't matter the 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 level I mean quite frankly let me tell you sincerely we don't get to hear up to one tenth of the transforming stories that happen in the lives of people what what we receive here on Friday is, is just a token because we're constrained by time and then because not everybody who would want to share is available here and um, I really really am touched and then to know how how easy God has made this thing particularly for me I am deeply indebted to him you see let me tell you this when when you honestly sit down and talk with a man of God who fears and loves God he may end up crying because of the pain. It's a difficult thing to head a ministry, to run a ministry, to mentor and to teach people. There's no guarantee anywhere that they will be changed. There is no guarantee that they will even listen to you. And so when people give you their attention and commit their lives, it's much more than they are liking you. 
there is a grace there is an anointing are we together i am i am very very touched the workers in this ministry who have made my job easy you don't see me running around here to verify what are they doing and i acknowledge i talk with pastors i have colleagues in ministry i have senior colleagues fathers mentors and i know how difficult they will tell you it's easy to preach but the system to make your message heard and understood is very difficult are we together now and i don't want to take lightly and take for granted um what the lord is doing in this ministry and through my life and um i honestly want to appreciate everyone i more so want to acknowledge and appreciate everyone listen carefully and i'm saying this sincerely everyone who is genuinely part of this vision you know i hope you know that no one is obligated to believe in you are you aware of that that there is no yoke on anybody to believe whatever you said god told you it's a difficult thing to be trusted to be believed in enough for people to commit their loyalty and their lives if god is not ashamed to declare his vulnerability to men then no man of god should every time i come down from the car and i see people here despite the weather despite you see some sitting in the grass hanging around there are people inconveniencing themselves right now from around the world listening do they have to do this am i the only man of god and and uh, you know the most touching part of it is when people go out of their way to travel from other cities some of you are seated here now all through the week people have come from within the country from outside the country inconvenience themselves you don't want to know the sacrifice that people make week in week out some of them are men of god too they have their own ego they have their own pedigree and they drop that thing aside to come and sit down to listen to be blessed to be mentored please if god ever gives you influence value it is god helping somebody tonight if god ever makes men to say i will follow you as you follow christ value it these are the things that when i see sometimes i'm so moved i'm so touched sometimes you see me just sit there and um i just say lord thank you you don't have to do this many men of god do not have the privilege of being loved across all regions usually there is one region that loves you and then another region that persecutes you harshly with a level of hatred that can almost neutralize the love that you have but god has made this different in my life and this ministry there is no region i have gone to that i'm not genuinely loved it's not normal i go to the east and i'm greatly loved i go to the west the south here the middle belt in fact the bible you know the bible says a prophet has is not without honor except in his hometown but the case is very different here i am deeply loved even within this place and i truly 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 value it hallelujah there are very few men of god and i tell you this very few men of god who operate in the level and the dimension of the gift of the spirit and a ministry like this who are not openly persecuted you don't work in there is a level of the spirit that if you walk above just get set to be in in everybody's negative book you see that but of course not everybody will love you and believe in you but let's be honest let's be honest even those who probably if at all talk against me they don't really hate me some are just ignorant or maybe intimidated or maybe frustrated there are few people who are honestly truly speaking you say i mean i hate this person and i i want us to 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 understand this i want you to know that i value and appreciate everyone i really do 
you know men of god we are proud people and most times we act as if with or without the members um, we are all right it's not true it's not true it's just a psychological way of trying to let the members not take advantage of us but i cannot come here and speak to cheers no matter how anointed i am you are the seal of my apostleship it's 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 it's, it's really thank you thank you very much you truly are it's amazing only god knows but how many battles i would have fought that some of you fought it and won and kept quiet are we together i saw that grace in billy graham the grace that makes a man accepted in every region the only man of god that preached in north korea i saw that same grace in reinhard bonke it was one of the things that took me to joss to passionately i i don't want to carry the truth and have to be explaining to everybody do you know how painful it is to be misunderstood there is a grace there are spirits that are responsible for misunderstanding a man and an anointing did you know something as little as this just this someone alone can say this is occultic power this is demonic this it, there is a spirit that blinds the eyes of people so that no your good is evil spoken of are we together you can sow a seed to someone they'll say you are trying to bribe the family are, are you not seeing am i the only ones there are people that have the, they are sincere but never believed they bless you they are persecuted for blessing you they heal the sick and pay the price they open a branch and pay the price it takes grace to be loved not good intention my parents were right when they named me the way to love they saw very far so when people love you i have been moved the last few weeks look at the concert we held it you mean that rain and i saw many of you jumping up and down and rejoicing no it's a grace it's a grace the race is not to the swift there are very anointed men of god that someone would prefer to listen to the tape than to come and sit down physically so why do i have to travel that far and leave all the men of god in my city to come and sit down you know someone was talking to me and said apostle i think you spend too much time seeing people after service you go home past 12 it's not fair and i said oh dear i know how constraining it is for me sometimes i'm coming from another meeting but this is the least i can do to these dear people some of them come from as early as 12 and they sit they pray for me they sow into my life how busy can i get what else will i be doing It's true. I will cancel any meeting a thousand times to make sure you are trained, you are built, you are mentored. I rather fail, sincerely speaking. God, you are spiritual people. I'm not a politician. I rather fail so that you will succeed. Because if you succeed by me failing, then I succeeded. It's true. There is nobody, let me tell you, that I don't believe in. Pray in one minute and say, Lord, help my heart to receive. Help my heart to be open. You are being trained and mentored to become something. You may not look like it now, but brothers and sisters, you just follow with humility. It may take time. You may compare your life with others and it may look as if you are slow. You just follow and let time tell where God is taking you to. Please pray. Lord, the grace to listen. Yes, I know I'm a man of God. I know I have revelation. I know I have anointing. But Lord, the grace to listen. The grace to see beyond a man. Lord, I receive grace to be committed. 
I reject every suggestion by Satan to alienate me from what you are doing in this season. Lord, I know that you are calling me to an extraordinary ministry. There is a reason why you have planted me here. There is a reason why you are equipping me. I may not have all the money that I need now. Others may seem to have gone ahead of me, but like Jesus walking on water, I know you are taking me somewhere. You lead me and guide me to the city of love. In the name of rushing to look for results you're a man of God here pray that prayer twice Lord may I may I resist the pressure of premature manifestation may I resist the pressure of pride and arrogance your life may look slower than the normal pace but when God is done with you you will find out that what you would have been doing has already been done in your obedience Lift your voice and pray. It's a costly thing to go ahead of God. It's a costly thing to preach ahead of God. It's a costly thing to move ahead of God. The Bible says with God, not before God. With God when you walk with Him. There's an old hymn that says, when we walk with the Lord in the light of his word, not when we go ahead of him. Men will force you to move ahead of seasons in your life. They will make you do things God is not saying. They will pressure you to open doors God is not opening. And destroy you and laugh at you when you fall. But happy is the man that can sustain the stamina to walk at God's pace. Please pray, Lord, the grace. Hallelujah. I remember years ago, a particular friend a pastor friend then he met me then koinonia had not started we just used to hold the weekly programs then on campus and he met me one day and said man of god you need to go for tv ministry the level of your anointing even some bishops don't have that's supposed to be a good advice the same advice of peter jesus don't die you are too innocent to go to the cross and that advice looked like a nice advice. And they just felt you are on that. Please, write books. Do this. Do that. And every time I went to the Lord, the Lord made me know that, Son, it is within my power to make you anything. So if I don't, it's because there is a time appointed. People told me, why don't start a church? Do something. Do this, do that, start TV ministry. 
buy a car, buy this, buy that. You see, let me tell you, the steps of a spiritual man is very strange. A spiritual man is not a natural man. Don't sit down. You, how you know you are spiritual is the pathway of your life is meticulously guarded by the will of God. Others can go the way they want, but God says, "Remember, anytime I look at you, there is a nation in you. So they can. You, it is your obedience that will correct their mistakes. They can go, but you can't just go like them." There are some of you, you started your spiritual work with the same level with many others that have churches and branches today. And sometimes they may look at you and say, man of God, you are the one who mentored us. And God says, sit down. I know what I'm doing with you. Because when I'm done with you, there are certain kinds of graces and mantles that must come. And God says, sit down. Are we together? Please, I want you to listen. Men will mock you. They will misunderstand you. There is nothing unusual. We just are not students of history. That's why these things surprise us. Go and read the Bible. Any great vision is fought by hell. You see why your life is fought by hell? The devil will fight you tooth and nail because he would rather you die. In your death is the death of a generation. So he would rather you die. Instead of killing the generation one by one, he says, kill Moses. Instead of killing the entire earth, human race, kill Jesus. Let me tell you this. This is a sensitive season in the spirit. Satan is not looking for everybody. There are people he will pass looking for others. Your, your, your destiny if the devil ever stops to consider you there's something he's seeing it's not just i will live long i will live old no there are people here listen to me satan stopped attacking your family and turned to you because he found out out of everything he searched he found out if i can destroy her prayer life if i can destroy the anointing that i'm seeing this man of God is surely a prophet of God. He does not even know it. But if I can kill that grace, then there is no need fighting 120 people. There is no need of fighting a Decapolis if it can make one man mad. And so because of that, listen, the devil will fight you. You may want to get up and come for koinonia and the devil relax now. Can't you get the tape afterwards? It's an attack. It's an attack. People will mock you sometimes and say you have been going to church. What is it to show for your life? No job, no house. Everybody is moving forward and they are leaving you. And you feel stupid for staying with God. This my God? Ah. He is my God and his name is Yahweh. Your name is Yahweh. something you will use for 10 years and need another thing no there are see listen 
you can get a degree you can get a master's you can get a phd and life will evolve such that what you studied may no longer be useful it is possible you can start a business and your product life evolves such that your product is no longer needed like a typewriter are we together every other thing in life needs constant evolution but when you know him when you find him when he anoints you my brother you stay through any time there is no mortal man who can edge you out of the systems of god they can believe you are gone god will show them you are still there listen years ago when god was training me i remember one of the things that god told me he said son take your eyes away from the vanities of men the flamboyancy of ministry you just stay with me let me teach you there are many things i would later learn in my life i didn't know that was what the holy spirit was teaching me the holy spirit is a priceless asset don't mind the ignorant people that make it look like it doesn't pay to follow him you will look stupid while you follow him but when he's done with you he will bring beauty and glory they will look at you and your life will be Beulah and Hephzibah. You can do ministry the way you want to do. You can believe you have all the revelation you need and all the anointing. You just start going. On the way, you will see what dimensions of the kingdom you have ignored. And the price you will have to pay. And the price you will make others pay. For not paying attention. It's not enough to be called. It's not enough to feel trained. It's not enough to feel ready. You must be approved of God. Our level of carnality in this generation is becoming very serious. We ignore the voice of God. We just want to do things and get up and do it. No respect for the timing of God. No respect for spiritual things. Listen. Listen. We live by common sense. We run by principles. But we fly by instructions. Are, are you getting what I'm saying? When you want to walk in life one step, you can use brain work. Brain work is how many people want to achieve their destiny. The time in your life is too short to use brain work to be great. Then you use principles to run. But if it is flight, you will have to work on instructions. Those who teach pilots are not called teachers. They are not called lecturers. They are not called advisors. They are called instructors. Please sit down. Let's go to the word. I just, I just thought to, to just allow the Holy Spirit talk to us. You know, when, when people see the anointing of the Spirit upon my life, many people believe it's just luck. I was just fortunate to be anointed. Or I was just called and ordained to be anointed. Or I was just fortunate to meet anointed people and God anointed me. Do you really believe that? There are people who know nothing about the anointing. But then they will tell you, don't mind all these people. And yet you don't, we see, wisdom is justified by her children. Brothers and sisters, it is God that is the confirmer of everything. If God is not confirming something in your life, then listen to the person he's confirming something in his life. Are we together? One of the most dangerous things that can happen to a man is pride. You, you keep hearing me say this thing all the time. Pride is not just wrong. It truly is evil. You will watch yourself entering a pit and going down per second per second. Yet pride will make you believe you are in control. You are in charge. I am very open. To want to know the areas in my life where I am ignorant. Because if I don't pay attention to them, 
that would be the advantage of Satan in my life. So I like to know what don't I know. Thank God for the one I know. But what don't I know? I'm, I'm like a spiritual archaeologist. I don't want God to be this way and I'm there jumping. What else am I doing? Because I've learned through experience that the secret to a man's relevance, not his making heaven, his relevance is to be where God is. You can make heaven whether you are where God is or not. I just want to be where you are. You know that song? Dwelling daily in your presence I don't want to worship from afar I want to be where you are, dwelling in your presence, feasting at your table, surrounded by your glory, in your presence, that's where I here God is saying be careful I want to announce you greater than you want to announce yourself but just be patient others may announce themselves and say look I am sent of God my father is a priest we are the sons of Skiva and the demon say no we don't know you but God can look at you and say I'm announcing this my daughter I'm announcing this my son it may cost you some momentary inconvenience. Don't mind it. Which woman loses her baby just because of birth pains? In spite of the fact that the baby, she's carrying a child and is inconveniencing. She may be tired and almost want to give up. But she knows that very soon. And when that woman's delivery time is come, she may go through all kinds of constraints. But when that child comes... People who were not supposed to come and visit will find their way. And they will not just come alone, they will come with gifts. Don't invite people into your life when the child is not born. Nobody comes to greet you when you are pregnant. If you can stay through and the child comes, then you deserve every gift. The wise men were around, but they never came to Mary. It was after Jesus was born. The Magi, they came. The Bible says they brought, they came and bowed down before a baby. Not before Mary or Joseph. They bowed down before a baby and brought gifts of, of gold, of frankincense and myrrh. When you stay with God and birth what he's putting. And you see, God doesn't do nine months pregnancy. The pregnancy depends on many things. You can carry a child for five years. The first child can be delivered in four months and then the second child in seven years. This is God for you. Are we together? The first child can just be something that is very simple in the spirit. But the second child can be the core of your anointing. You will stay there. Someone can have seven births of spiritual reality. And you stay with one forever. As if it's cause. But when that child comes, you will find out that all those seven will need that one child to be able to live. That's why you had to stay that long. When they looked at the womb of her with child, they said there are two nations, not two babies. Two nations. Hallelujah. So pay attention. You are not just here to receive tea and bread. You don't need to put yourself under this kind of constraint if all you need in life is tea and bread. What God is giving you in this place is more than tea and bread. It's more than just a successful life. As important as it is. It's more than just prosperity. In as much as we know prosperity. It's more than just influence. God is giving you something. That cannot be bought in any market on earth. He's putting something in your life. That makes it impossible. For some of you what you are receiving is the remedy for these complexes. And all this inferiority that our families have put in us. 
for when you have something that only God can provide then men must look for you that's what he's giving you are planning to save to buy a house he's giving you what will make house owners come to you and say can I have the privilege of having you in my estate God is showing you a more excellent approach to life it looks strange because it's not a mainstream approach to life but you walk with God and see a time will come you will turn back and not have needs again and you say Lord what did he do I say it's a more excellent way you follow the way men men follow to be established to live their lives you are going to leave God somewhere in your equation especially in our generation you must leave God somewhere but when he guides you when he leads you Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Pray in the Spirit for one minute. And say, Lord, open my eyes through your word tonight. Blessed be the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Tonight I'm preaching... A message I titled spiritual stability please listen to this message It's a powerful message and it will bless you spiritual stability three scriptures first Corinthians 15 and verse 58 spiritual stability I didn't have any divine revelation for this message but the message has come as a response to a need that I've seen in the body of Christ that we need to explore the keys that are responsible for being grounded and being established in spiritual things. Are we together? The teaching is an attempt to address the vacillation that we continually experience in our walk with God based on a number of factors that we are going to be discussing that a believer can not only grow but can become stable are we together? yes so it's, it's, it's an attempt to explore the keys to a grounded and productive Christian life it matters to you and matters to God that your Christian life be grounded and productive. The Bible declares once and again that herein is our Father glorified. It says when we bear much fruit. It says that we produce fruit and that our fruits abide. Are we together? Three scriptures very quickly. Follow me tonight. I hope we are able to finish it tonight. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable. Then it says, always abounding in the work of the Lord. For as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Paul is speaking here to the church in Corinth. And he's telling believers that they be steadfast. And then unmovable, unshakable, unbendable. So it is possible that a man can be stable in his Christian experience. Ephesians chapter 4, please, and verse 14. The Bible, speaking about the fivefold ministry, it says that we henceforth, the matured ones, the ones who have been built now by the gifts that, the, that, that, that God has supplied the body, that we henceforth be no more what? Please talk to me. Children, toes, toe, and fro, and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men and cunning craftiness, whereby they lie in wait to deceive. So there is a level of spiritual stability that a believer can get, he can attain unto a realm and a level in his work with God where you are unbendable where you you are so fortified that deception becomes an impossible experience for you it is possible 
one more scripture and then we'll begin to teach colossians chapter 2 please we'll read from verse 6 to 8 colossians chapter 2 it says as ye therefore received christ jesus the lord so walk ye in him we're reading to verse 8 7 it says rooted read with me rooted and built up in him stop there notice it didn't just say built up rooted and then built up in him and established in the faith as ye have been taught abounding therein with thanksgiving verse 8 beware so you are not just being aware just by an information something you are doing in verse 7 is what will sustain this lest any man spoil you these are the various ways that men can be made to vacillate spiritually ready through number one is what please talk to me philosophy and then vain deceit and then the traditions of men and then the redoments another word there is the patterns the modus operandi the system of operation of this world and not after christ it is possible that a man can live his life manifesting the knowledge that just comes through philosophy and then vain deceit and then the tradition of men and then the redoments of this world you can believe this today and then tradition tells you no things are done this way and then you readjust your life to suit tradition are we together and while you are trying to gain stability through tradition all of a sudden the redoments of this world these are the things that destroy us they say this is how they do it in life you don't even know who puts that rule no this is how they do it this is how they do this this is how parenting happens this is how marriage happens this is how prosperity happens this is how ministry is done the bible says beware prophesy to yourself say beware he said less any man so who are the men who are the people the vessels that the devil uses they are not just angels they are men let any man spoil you the word spoil you there doesn't mean corrupt the word spoil you means to plunder to steal from you like an asset something of treasure has been given to you and then a man comes to spoil you like you come and rob a man and carry everything that is treasurable he said beware that means you are possessing something that has potential something of worth but beware lest men come sometimes innocently but they are in the similitude of robbers they can spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit and the tradition of men and the redoments this is the one that even disturbs me the most the redoments of this world this is how it is done it's amazing how many people's destinies have been wrong perpetually they one of the ways that people have become failures in life is by aligning to a tradition and a pattern that has been obeyed for a long time but is wrong just because someone did something and kept doing it kept doing it for decades they can tell you this is it in this family nobody really you all this your jesus thing we love jesus and you the person who is talking is not very serious with god and he's marketing his template of spirituality to you and every time you show any unusual passion they say see we did this thing and left it the regiments of this world and people even turn scriptures in the bible and say see the bible even said don't be over what, what, over righteous over spiritual and the person who is sharing that thing doesn't love the word of god he just found a scripture that will give him a basis for laxity and unseriousness a man can be stable spiritually as a man of god it's important to realize that you are mentoring and building people based on a truth you are convicted about let me tell you this not everybody can receive the correction that you propose after receiving your error not everybody will be alive and within your reach are we together if i teach you come if i teach you something erroneous now 
and 10 years down the line this brother goes abroad and he's in the u.s he has institutionalized that error and is paying the price life is whipping him for it and i later go and find the truth and i say people sorry what i said 10 years ago is a mistake this guy may never live to hear it he will still be carrying the mindset of me of 10 years ago and even when god is telling him adjust he said no way apostle said this that's why it is important that men of god we become the first guinea pigs to our revelations before propose it's not just anything you hear on tape and anything you feel is nice or anything by a man of god you love and respect you just ship and just spill everything to your people when people are loyal to you that means they have come to a point where either through a track record or a divine revelation they have come to accept your word as the word of god over their lives so they have opened up their spirits that any communication that comes from this man of god should be received subconsciously they have come to a point where they they have they have found comfort in following you as you follow after christ and you have a responsibility to probe and vet every revelation that is communicated to make sure it is worthy of giving to a generation not just members beware thank you lest any man spoil you are we together through philosophy vain deceit traditions of men and the rudiments of this world and not after christ it's amazing how you see people believe this today and they don't believe this tomorrow today i believe deliverance tomorrow i don't believe deliverance today i believe prosperity then i read one book by somebody i respect and all of a sudden i hate money next tomorrow i believe the gifts of the spirit the day after i believe common sense next tomorrow i believe divine direction the next ah, ah. no those those vacillations are very very dangerous you must be established to know that you can look at your children and say children before you were born this was what i stood for and even now as i am old i'm standing for this i called god a faithful god when i was 18 i am 85 he's still a faithful god i have not created another wrong name based on an experience that's the goal of this teaching and i'm going to share with you three keys that the Lord or four that God has put in my heart keys that will create stability in your Christian life because you see the internet social media um, Christian channels and all kinds of spiritual platforms right now on one hand they have benefited the body of Christ but on another hand they have created gross confusion there are many people you have heard people you love and respect say things that have almost rattled the foundation of your convictions it's easy to resent somebody you don't believe but what happens when you hear someone who you love so much is saying and doing and standing for things that now makes you confused and so i must share with you otherwise we are going to be in serious trouble especially as a man of god here there is no guarantee that the person you look up to will continue to stand straight so in as much as you look up to people it's important to create a system are we together otherwise we are going to be in trouble you follow men as they follow christ not just as they go before you you follow men as they follow christ meaning that the day you don't see christ before them you are permitted to leave him this is this is this in itself this thing i just said in itself can bring me a lot of trouble because sometimes we men of god teach people that trying to probe whether you are still following christ as they follow you can draw a cost to their life and even when people have long left the things of god they still demand loyalty from people no you follow a man of god as he follows christ if you're with me say amen. amen the first key that you need to have stability in your christian experience and please i don't want you to forget this the first key is an experiential revelation of god write it down an experiential revelation of god i can spend the whole night talking here if 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 we're unable to to exhaust this within the time we have then we can just have part two of it 
an experiential revelation of God. Look up, please. There is the experience of the kingdom. John chapter 3, when you read um, from, verse, from verse 1 down to 3, let's, let's go to verse 3. But Nicodemus comes to Jesus by night and says to him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a man sent from God, he says. He says, for no man can do these things except God be with him. And then verse 3, John, ah, okay, keep verse 3. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom. Take note of the word see. Verse 4. Nicodemus now says, can a man be born when he's old? You know, can he enter into his mother's womb the second time? And then verse 5, Jesus clarifies and says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a man be born of water and of the spirit. Then he changes his terminology. He cannot enter the kingdom of God. He's talking about two related but different experiences there. To see the kingdom and to enter the kingdom, there is an experience of God. Listen very carefully. There is an experience, there is the knowledge of God, a theoretical knowledge, which is not wrong in itself. Are we together? But there is the experience, the experience of God. The Bible says, oh, taste and see, not just hear and believe, there is a place you hear, but there is a place you can taste, you can see. Your sensory perceptions can participate in your knowing God. Brothers and sisters, the times that we are living in will require you knowing a God that you have an experience over. It's good to know Joshua Selman's God. It's good to know this and that man of God's God. But you must come to a point where you glean from their own experience and then create a road map through it until he becomes your God. Are we together? The experiential revelation of God. The Bible says, and the people that do know their God, not the people that do hear that there is a God, the heathens heard already about the God of the Hebrews. But they did not know him. Let, let me tell you this. Your life will be at the mercy of your experiential revelation of who God is to you. And there are three ways that God is revealed experientially. In fact, I think there's a message that I preached some years knowing God experientially. You can get that message. It will bless you in no small way. But three major ways. Ready? Number one. The first way to have an experiential revelation of God is through his word, the written word. 1 Samuel 3.21 1 Samuel 3.21 God can give men encounters through his word. I told you that the word of God, the logos, are we together? Just keep the scripture there. But make reference quickly on your notes to John 1 verse 1. The Bible says, in the beginning was the word. The Greek word there is logos. The logos of God, the thoughts of God. A compendium of his character, his methodology. Encapsulated in a material. So that as you study that material, you not only cram scripture, but it expands your spiritual horizon to understand how God behaves. The logos. A man can experience God through his word. The Bible says, And the Lord appeared again in Shiloh, for the Lord revealed himself to Samuel in Shiloh. How? By the word of the Lord. So God can use his word to reveal himself. You can know his character based on his word. I know Sam. Come Sam. I know Sam, I've worked with Sam for many years. He's an amazing gentleman and I love him very much. Because I have interacted with him very much. Are we together? There is something that someone can come and meet me now and say, Apostle, Sam said I should tell you A, B, C. I will make reference to the track record of my working with him. Are we together? And know whether Sam can say this or not. I would rather be wrong and say sorry to that person. But as far as that information is concerned, I can throw it away. Are you getting what I'm saying? So the word of God is a revelation. 
um, one of our dear media ladies, I, I, I was, during my birthday, she has a blog page, a wonderful blog page, by the way. You can, you honestly would want to just go to her blog page. Very rich, wonderful materials. And that lady, I can't even remember the name of the blog page. It was, it was shown me and I went through it. And she wrote certain quotes or certain things that, that I say that has inspired. I didn't even know that I've stressed those points that much to become a quote. Are we together? Now, if one young man gets up and says, I know apostle. Apostle is my spiritual father. Apostle is my disease. My apostle is my mother. Is my uncle. Is my sister. And says all those kinds of things. And they say two quotes from him. And he just says one kind of thing. He says, no, it's my Muro that said this one now. It's not. <laughs> Are you seeing that now? Automatically, you know that this guy is a liar. If someone says, I attend Koinonia every time, there are a few tests very few litmus tests. I mean, you don't need to, you can't fake it. Just, there are very few things, anybody at all, even if you are not a faithful member, there are just certain things. You can know that, no, it's a lie. Someone attends Koinonia, hear someone shout and say, what's happening? Say, ah, I thought you said you attend this. You are not, something is betraying you somewhere. So the logos of God, thank you, Sam. The word of God was not just given for us to cry is a compendium of his way of behavior through different dispensations so that as we study we have the mind of Christ are we together we have an understanding of the way he behaves so the Lord appeared to Samuel in Shiloh by the word number two the way remember we're still on point one now I hope I hope I'm not confusing you you can call it point a through his word B, the second way experiential revelation of God is given to the saints. Now pay attention. Is through the family of believers. Your interaction with the family of believers. What the Bible calls the household of faith. Many people do not know that your interaction with a kingdom community of believers can help you experience God. The family of true believers, the household of faith, is one of the platforms that God designed for men to encounter Him experientially. A number of scriptures, Acts chapter 2, please. We'll read 42 to 47. Acts chapter 2. Acts chapter 2. 42 to 47. And they continued steadfastly. Listen carefully. Who are the day? The community of believers. Is that true? The Bible says steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine. And what? Talk to me. And fellowship. And in breaking of bread and in prayers. We are reading to 47, 43. And fear came upon every soul. And many wonders and signs were done by the apostles. 44. And all that believed were what? All that believed were not apart. There was a community system. So this issue of kingdom community, I have, I have proposed again and again that the keys to maintaining kingdom values, one of the keys is to create a community of believers. No believer can truly become matured in the spirit in isolation. You must be grafted to a family of faith that is territorial. Are we together? And all that believed were together and had all things in common. 45. They sold their possession and their goods and parted them all uh, to all men, uh, you know, as everyone had a need. 46. And they, listen, continuing daily with one accord in the temple and breaking of bread from what? House to house did eat their meat with gladness and singleness of heart what was the result 47 praising god the bible says and having favor with all the people and the lord added to the church daily as should be saved that means god was supporting that community life saying you are getting it right everywhere there is a community of believers that is a platform that was created by God to see that believers rise continue to grow the benefit they get is God's support by adding daily not weekly not monthly not per fellowship daily 
they were praising God, having favor with all the people, the Lord added to the church. He calls them the church. Daily, such as should be saved. The family of faith. Galatians 6 verse 10. Where we get the word household of faith. Very powerful scripture. Then give us Hebrews chapter 10 verse 25. I'm giving you scriptures like this because I want to support what I'm teaching intelligently. There are all kinds of people. We minister to people from different nations now. If Let me teach you this. This is a place for mentorship. So we believe in excellence. But I want you to learn the motivation behind the things that I do. You see, when you begin to mentor people who come from different geographic and cultural context. I can talk to all of you without bringing one scripture. Because there is a track record of your understanding my pattern of teaching. Are we together? You know that every time I speak, I will support it. But maybe in France or the US or somewhere, someone right now who may be heathenistic is listening and just has a Bible or an unbeliever, a Muslim who just gave his life to Christ. So you will need to support these points. They may look basic to you. Oh, one point is enough, Apostle, I'm convinced. But I'm not just talking to you alone. When you begin to minister at a global level, you must have the patience and the simplicity to carry the larger crowd of people along. Otherwise, a time will come, your doctrine will only be understood by those who are close to you. And that is because of the track record you have created. Are you getting this now? So, Galatians 6 verse 10. It says, as we therefore, as we have therefore opportunity, let us do good to how many men? all men but it says let your focus be on a community of believers this those who are of the household of faith you encounter god through a spiritual community life let me tell you this you have a spiritual family just like a physical family and the spiritual family of course ultimately is our family connected to God but on earth and territorially you will never prosper spiritually if you are not connected to a larger body of a spiritual family God designed it that way are we together there are all kinds of spiritual possibilities that are vested broadly speaking in the body of Christ but uniquely speaking to the spiritual family that God connects to you friends revelation access to anointing access to help there are many believers when they are in trouble for instance and they need to see the mercy of god there is no man and there is no community to come and reveal the mercy of god to them someone dies you are alone nobody to come and greet you you give birth to a child nobody you are not part of any larger body of believers that can be sympathetic to what you are doing when you need to see the hand of God, you are not connected to anyone. Most times when people come and talk to me and say, Apostle, this is uh, somebody, a member of Koinonia and all of that. Most times I ask, what department? He says, I'm not in any department, but I can assure you I'm faithful. He says, you are marking yourself already. How do you know you are faithful? Community life is very powerful when it has to do with experiencing God. A, a spiritual family shields you. There are some of us here right now. Physically, you almost don't have a family. Either everybody has died or everybody is completely wayward and not of God. Or everybody hates you. And already you are just like a prodigal son but for a good reason. Until you find God, don't come back home. Are we together? Some of us are unbelievers. We are the first Christians in our family. So you really don't have, you can't stand there in isolation. Look at this. How many of you have seen charcoal burning? Coal burning, red hot coal. Remove one red hot one and just keep it. Don't off the, uh, what they call it now. Just leave it there. Don't pour water on it. After a while, what happens? It starts going down. So the strength of that fire was the community life. Notice that every time Satan wants to destroy a life, one of the ways is he will make everybody in your community your enemy. He will make you to have problem with everyone, your head of department, apostle, anybody. When all your helpers have been driven through your hatred, when you are alone, 
It's not only God that comes to Jacob when he's alone. Satan too comes when you are alone. He can come to you and say, now that the person who can pray for you is gone. Now that the sister that can support you, you have, you have hated her and you have insulted her, I can now strike you. And your pride will not allow you to run to them. So you will stay there till they find your dead body spiritually. Community life is powerful. Are we together now? When the believers were afraid and they were persecuted. Imagine if all of them hid one by one. They went somewhere and stayed alone. Even in times of crisis, as in physically speaking, the security. When people are clustered within an area, it becomes, even if they are afraid, it becomes difficult for the enemy to just break every siege there. Some of us stand alone and do everything alone and we flatter ourselves into believing that we are strong my bible says two are better than one is that true the bible says then when they become three they become a, a cord that cannot be easily broken community life is a powerful system to have an experience of god when you come into the sanctuary there are dimensions of god that you ordinarily would not have gotten in your personal place of prayer but God reveals himself as the word of God is coming now as you look at your brother someone taking the testimony promise is coming to take the testimony you are learning something about God somebody is doing this you are learning something they raise a song of worship you see a Jimmy worshiping wow so great men can worship God this vocally you are what the the worship team revealing the excellence of God there are things you will never learn just sitting down in your room are we together listen let me tell you this let us encourage and, and, and I'm saying this from a personal point encourage your children to have a desire for the house of God not just the things of God there are families here that come as a family for koinonia I truly am honored when I see that because it's, it's not just a sacrifice they are salvaging a generation especially some of these are young children some of them hate god the devil is planting a seed of hatred in them have you seen them they come to the house of god they never enter and sit down they stroll around they uh, they hang around they move around they are making calls they are doing this if they say something that is funny they laugh outside and then they turn they continue you give them offering they go and buy uh, uh what do we call it puff puff around and they are eating let's not let's not it's not a laughing matter it's a sign that we are losing something are we together the house of god so you go home now and you say let's pray see the child frowning his face he's coming to sit down it's time for prayer i say please this prayer that they are lying in this house is better to be lying with prayer is better community life community life Hebrews 10 25 Hebrews 10 25 not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is he said but exhorting one another and so much the more as he see the day approaching are we together that we should not forget and forsake the assembling of ourselves you've heard me listen to my message um preservers of divine ordinances part one and two i teach there that any spiritual environment is bankrupt if there is no platform that can create a convergence of believers for the purpose of training equipping and mentorship you can look at a territory and know that there are no apostolic and prophetic voices because there is no platform honored by god you see his signature there as a prophetic platform that has nothing to do with denominational barriers you know that this one is god making his presence known mentoring a territory to know him it's not just tied to i am this i'm that i'm apostle this i'm prophet this i'm apostle joshua Selma. no there has to be a, a platform 
where believers are mentored where they grow are we together let's read one more scripture Hebrews chapter 3 verse 12 and 13 and then we'll move to something that I think um, we can just stop at point one I don't know I don't know let's see how God will help us so you have an experiential revelation of God that's the first key and that by his word number one number two by the presence your participation in the household of faith Hebrews chapter 3 from verse 12 take heed brethren look up please lest there be any of you let there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief in departing from the living God next verse 13 but exhort one another how long exhort one another not exhort God exhort one another that means I have a role to play in your spiritual growth you have a role to play in my life you will think that because I am the one who is majorly building you you don't have any role he say exhort one another daily while it is called today less any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin that means something happens come pastor femi that pastor femi can be a powerful believer but in isolation to the supply of the body are we together now there is no system of exhortation he may not even know when he has veered off sincerely and not know but that the presence of the corporate body is a spiritual system for check and balance are you getting what I'm saying now? You may not know. You may be busy, Pastor Femi, and maybe have two months of ministration all around and not have the time to pray, for instance. And you may be justifying yourself. But when you come now and see that I'm busier than you and yet I'm still praying, by that act, I have exhorted you. I have killed the excuse the devil wants to take to say, I am busy. You go back and say, no. If I'm just doing one ministration per week, and it's affecting my prayer life someone that is doing three are you seeing that now yeah the moment you want to become proud and arrogant i just got one million and then you come and turn and you see a jimmy lying down ah and you say how much is his shirt how much is his shoe you just say i, I better drop my my small one million that is entering my head and lie down and roll before god you are exhorting you don't just exhort by talking your life shows it too when you see people that love God more than you rolling on the ground, sometimes you don't plan to roll. But when you look around, ah, Benga is kneeling. Ah, Daddy Prof is kneeling. Hey, Jimmy is rolling. Promise is rolling. You turn back, Sam is kneeling. You will feel stupid. I say, what I say, do you better join and kneel down? Those outside are falling more than those inside. Are we together yes it is the absence of this corporate life that makes local champions leave God there is no system have when when you start making money and you go where wealthy people are worshiping God they throw their phone away and roll on the floor you just stand and say this is my boss this is the person that gave me the job that I've been testifying I had she was a millionaire before I was born so this is how this woman rose before God. You call your wife and say, wife, we will roll on that carpet. Roll on the ground. Sometimes you need someone higher than you to show you how to serve God. Because you see, every time you have results, sometimes they confuse you. How do I serve God at this new level? And God says, come to the house of God. I, I started prophesying. And right now, one month, everybody is placing a demand on my grace. And then God says, oh yeah, come and meet a prophet who started prophesying before you were born again and see how he serves God. And all of a sudden, you are dancing. I got an award. And this award is this and that. And God says, come, let me show you the person who owns the company that gives the award and how he's serving God. Corporate life does so much. Many things happen in this service beyond the pulpit. You can have a heart of wickedness to annoy a brother or sister and all of a sudden they use their kindness and torture you all through the service. 
you say nasty things they say no problem it's well this is my seat is say no okay sit down and while they sit down favor just come somebody says sit, sit here every bad thing you are doing god is speaking to you in that service with results your message in that service becomes look it is it is good to be good this bad attitude work on it you will be surprised i may be teaching on the anointing but that's the message you came to the house of god there are many believers that are not like christians because they are alienated from the house of god they cannot do you know that the house of god even helps you to speak well i mean educationally i'm not talking of spiritually many dull people around who have alienated when you listen to a man you listen to a people that have some measure of excellence do you know that it will affect you many people look at our uh, look at the children in koinonia you see how intelligent they are because they are gleaning from adults they go back and meet their their colleagues who don't they are not smart they they, they just fail everything like that and say ah, what is wrong that's why the children of pastors are very intelligent because from birth everybody holding them is praying or speaking or blessing they don't have the opportunity for wickedness to touch them that's why satan keeps timing them you are in the house of god turn to your neighbor and say this and that turn to your neighbor and do this you can even help socialize you came from a bad background where you even hate yourself you came to the house of god and you are somebody who is shy you can't turn and tell somebody god bless you and before you know it someone carries his hand gives you a big hug and you are like ah so this is how this thing is by next sunday you are ready come on now talk to me koinonia watch this the first person who ever hugged you was somebody in the house of god and you felt so bad you thought there were strings attached until they told you that's how they are here and you say really and somebody looks at you and says the lord told me you never knew that god can speak to men to bless you but someone just turns and says pastor femi um i don't know are you a first timer yes the lord asked me to give you ten thousand whereas you came god told you to leave your house and come by faith that someone will pay your transport if you didn't come to the house of god you will never experience god that way are you getting what i'm saying when you neglect the gathering of the saints it is not the same thing as listening to a tape there are things your eyes need to see there are things your ears need to hear I believe it's even one of the reasons hey Jimmy, why our generation keeps marrying bad wives and husbands where are you going to get a good wife let's be very sincere your chances of getting a very good God remember you need to marry somebody who believes what you are be what you believe you pray in tongues and somebody say I'm calling police is, is that marriage how Or the man wants to sow and say for what how much are we earning that we're going to sow because you don't understand these principles take seriously what i'm saying many believers I, I don't know sometimes i don't know what is wrong with us we come and we sit down and then we go outside go and ship all versions of unbelievers bring into our lives and the devil said thank you that one thing i've been looking for to cheat you in life you finally gave me ah the brothers in church are not nice the sisters in church let me tell you it's better to die in church oh. let me just give you a very honest statement because god is always found in the midst of the lampstands if a brother slaps you in church there's somebody he submits to you can report if your if your wicked bubble somewhere slaps you who will you report to his father listen hallelujah sit down as as you are hearing me you see god is saying many things this night but there are many stubborn believers that as god is talking now you have programmed your spirit to be as hardened as whatever may you be delivered this night in the name of jesus any, any unbeliever somewhere just go and fool you and laugh around and say oh don't mind all these god people you are going to your church again haba you can't make this sacrifice for me that's already a luciferian spirit it's a revelation to run away fast 
He has not married you. He is, he's, he's stopping. He's resenting a man of God. The man of God that is training and building you. He's saying, oh, don't mind all these people. And you are truly, you are not minding them. Say the house of God. People have gotten jobs because of their connection. Is that true? With Christian families. Please learn this thing. Many of our loved ones are suffering in pride because there is a dimension of the love and the mercy of God in the house of God that they have ignored. By God's grace, in this ministry, as you know, we have a system that provides help for people. It may be in limited ways, but at least we make sure we do. There are people just being members of Koinonia, their school fees were settled till they graduated. They didn't come from families that could allow that. And they saw the love of God. And it's not necessarily that it was me that paid it. Some of them just came together. At ah, this your final year. You got born again in January. Oh, it's better than nothing. You are welcome. So what's the issue now? My school fees. How much do you have? 1,000. How much is left? 40,000. No. Believers, let's come together. Let me tell you. Don't let anybody make you hate the church. Hear what I'm saying. Don't let, I know that we have issues. I'm not saying we don't have issues. Are we together? But don't make anybody. When we started this ministry, our fun, our jokes, our time out, everything was among believers. It's why you see the marriages in this ministry very solid and powerful. Are we together? Very solid and powerful. Is God speaking to you? Stability through fellowship. That God is revealing, he's, he's experientially revealing himself. Please, sisters, let me say it again. Don't marry anybody. Don't even say yes. Don't say let's try two months or two months. No, don't even do one day. Don't marry anybody that is not connected to any spiritual family. Even if he tells you he's born again. I repeat, don't marry any man insult me but just listen any man this i love you i love you thing this we're in the end times the devil is 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 destroying people's destinies you will be unfair not just to yourself but to the children that are coming out of you that's how you have all these people go around deceiving these girls that they are christians before you know it the moment they get married they say i hope you know you understand that me when it's cold i take a, 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 a this thing and the lady saying, I never saw it. Says, is it just because I gave a little break? The, the house of God has a system that ensures you get it right. Well, it's my job to teach and say what I'm saying. It's your own job to listen and hear what I'm saying as a word from the Lord or stubbornly decide to do whatever you want. I will always pray for you even if you crash land. I have loved you with an everlasting love. But my advice is that it is better to be happy by listening. Are we together? Thank you, Pastor Femi. Number, number three, still on point one. Remember, I'm teaching on the keys that create stability in your work with God. And the first point we said was an experiential revelation of God. And we broke it down into a few points. Number one is that the word of God can help you experience God. Number two, the family of believers. Are you ready for number three? Number three. Now hold on please. Pay attention here. If this is where we stop tonight, then media this becomes part one. Are we together? This becomes spiritual stability part one. I doubt if we'll be able to finish because there are four points. But the third way of knowing God experientially is through your pain and challenges. Write it down. I want to seriously teach here. Psalms 107. We are going to read verse 6, verse 13, verse 19 and 28. 6, 13, 19, 28. Actually, the whole verse there. I want to make you love your past tonight. Not necessarily past and all you know many times we men of god teach hate the past leave it yes but i want to show you there is something from your yesterday that can reveal the god of your tomorrow they cried unto the lord when not in their comfort 
they cried unto the Lord in their trouble. And what did he do? He came in as a deliverer. Next verse. Verse, um, what now? 13. Please give us verse 13. Still 107 Psalms 13. They cried unto the Lord again in their trouble. What did he do? He didn't deliver them. He saved them. Are you seeing different dimensions? They cry unto the Lord. Their trouble makes them to cry unto the Lord. Let me tell you this, brothers and sisters. I hate to be a bearer of bad news. But there is something about your pain and the knowledge of God. There is a relationship between your tears. There is a relationship between your challenges and your disappointments. And the unique revelation of God to you. Pain and challenges force, force us to need and prioritize God. Write it down. Your pain and your challenges, they have a way of forcing you to need and prioritize God. There are many of us, it's not that you have left God, but sincerely, He's not a priority. And so certain times when, when certain things shake you and hit you, all of a sudden, you will remember that there, I, I need to run back to God. I need to make things right with them. I don't believe that God goes around causing people pain and sorrow. No, the Bible says every good and perfect gift. But because of our human nature, God utilizes every unfavorable moment. Let me tell you, a spiritual man is one who can turn both glory and pain into something that helps him to know God we have this we have this um, we have this level there there's something about believers we frown at pain when believers go through challenges and sometimes the church again we are the ones who bring these kinds of things come Sam all of a sudden something happens to Sam maybe he loses a loved one are we together and God forbid Sam, just an example. And or something happens to him, there's disappointment somewhere. And you hear believers come. Ah, ah Sam, didn't you hear God? What this didn't this happen? Didn't this happen? Whereas God is, is taking advantage of that opportunity to say, Sam, I'm bringing you to a point where there is something about me you otherwise would not know. If he did not go to the cave of Adullam, David would never know certain things about God. Please listen to what I'm saying. If you started that ministry from day one and 1,000 people came, you will never believe God is a God of process. And so, with all your anointing for the first one year, only two members. The day you did your thanksgiving, four came, two left before the service was over. And you just called your wife. Your wife said, my husband, I've never doubted you, but Kai, today, let me tell you the truth. I know that when you told me God called you, it's not, I'm using, I'm using husband, I'm using a... Come, wife. Now, watch this. I've never doubted you. You said God, God called you. I said, yes, he called. Are you not seeing what? I've, is it not, is it not my, my anointing that, that made your, your father sick that he allowed me to marry you? Why, when I, what are you, you are doubting me today? And then all of a sudden, the man is now touched and said, Lord, if my own wife, that is the surest member of my church, is about to leave, you better speak to me oh did you call me watch this that seven days dry will lead you to call on to god and god just comes and says son write this i it is true i have anointed you to speak my purposes to the nation a b c d where you will now be dancing celebrating 10 years anniversary when it's your time to give the testimony you are now going to say, look, I know that God is the lifter of men. And you see the wife crying because she knows. The other members are just laughing. They came into the inheritance of the promise. But the woman is standing there. Come, darling. Are we together? Ah, we want to thank God for our mother, our this. And she's just looking at them. Lord, thank you. If I left now, this I would have buried my head in shame. Thank you, Jesus. You have wasted your pain and your challenges. 
and never knew God through them. You conquer challenges not by having a way out, but by seeing God in them. In every challenge, there is a dimension of God that is waiting to be revealed. Listen, brothers and sisters. In every challenge, there is a dimension of God. There are dimensions of God you may never know. Though he slay me, yet will I trust him. There are things you hear me say casually about God today, brothers and sisters. It's because of the abundance of what I have gone through. There are things that you can hear or say at the beginning of this ministry. Remember I told you how things didn't work. There were times that I prayed, I fasted, I sowed seeds. I've said it, you've heard me say it again. All my scholarships were spent on the kingdom. Never spent anything on myself. There are times that my heavens will close. Oh God, is this tithing working or not? So when you see somebody come and say, Apostle, I've been tithing since January. Say, just January and you are complaining. <laughs> just January. And it's not like the favor closed. It's just that it's not yet enough. You better thank God and keep moving. There's something you know. Let me tell you. When you are too innocent in life, you can't be sent. Um, not I, 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 no, the word is I hope, I hope you understand what I mean by innocent when you are scarless you can't be sent there is a level of scar that must be on you as a testament you are never please help those under the anointing there you can never represent God scarless there is a mark that is a testament are we together now yes You've never been disappointed in your life. You've never had to cry in your life. You've never had to lock the door to pray. And as a man of God, just kneel down and say, Lord, I don't hate you, but right now, I don't know what to say. Don't mind all these people that lie all around and make it look like they've been laughing forever. It's a lie. Even Jesus wept. Say it after me. Jesus. One more time. Jesus the son of the living God, the word that creates everything, got to a point in his life where he said, Father, imagine if that part of Jesus was not captured for us. We'll feel guilty whenever we cry in the midst of challenges. But today, someone can lose a loved one and while we come, we'll not just say, why didn't you have faith? We will continue to teach on life, but we can join together and cry and not feel bad. Apostle, you are crying that somebody died. Well, what happened to the anointing that you work with? No problem. You may laugh at me, but I, I, have, I have learned something with God. That he's not just a mighty God. He can also be touched with the feelings of our infirmity. So I will not just preach life and run away from you when you lose your loved ones. And say, no, 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 we are, we are life-giving spirits. No, we are life-giving spirits, but there are women who died and didn't receive the promise. And the Bible joined all and called it faith. So we will cry together. Are we together? Oh, you come and all of a sudden you say, look, apostle, this and that and that and that, this and that. I mean, you know, not to feel bad, but I mean, look at this is how my life is. I made a stupid decision. I, I carried my salary and all of a sudden somebody scammed me and this happened. I'm just like, you are stupid. I've been drumming divine direction. No. Compassion. Pain and challenges reveal a dimension of God to you and through you that no other thing, no other dimension of kingdom living can reveal. There are some of you here, God will allow you purposely to stay without food so that the day you become a multi-millionaire, you can look at a family and they can say, Apostle, do you know we love God, but as it is, there's no food this night. You will say, well, maybe I've, I've prophesied to you. What else are you waiting for? No compassion is not natural with the natural man something must happen to a man to make him compassionate there's nothing like i'm naturally kind no it is life that can bring someone to his knees there are some of you here for instance you by your normal standard you probably would have been doing phd now or even be professors but some of you you are in 300 level right now it may look like it's a disadvantage but there is something through that pain that is revealing God tomorrow when you see somebody going through things and people say this year yeah guys say no I've been there you know why I don't talk against men of God they've persecuted me 
and they do it every time I know the pain of being persecuted I know the pain of being lied about I know the pain of being misunderstood so I will never sow that seed not to you not to anybody that's why I never insult the body of Christ when you hear people do that they are still innocent let them continue growing I know the pain of what it means to see a young man with influence like this and say maybe they are using charm or demonic power no I know the pain of people trivializing your sacrifice everybody say pain say challenges a lady that has entered five or six relationships and has been disappointed by all those brothers gave her heart gave her all and those brothers just made life miserable for her it may be bad but if you can see christ through your pain the sight of him will wipe your tears all of a sudden and you'll say thank you after all i've been through i still have joy i still have joy i still have joy after all I've been through, I still have joy. What have you gone through in life? Hold on. I want to ask you a question, everyone listening to me. What have you gone through in life that has made you matured? What have you gone through in life that has stopped you from insulting men? What have you gone through in life, man of God, that will make money not to move you? what have you gone through in life how many of you know that there is a way life whips you that even when you see the result you don't celebrate much again because you started celebrating without the result you are already used to it so if someone buys a car you just say lord thank you and then you go back and say lord who should i give it to god says, oh, you can enjoy this one and it doesn't move you because you have learned to rejoice in the midst of pain i show you a, a this is a very mature spiritual teaching I believe in prosperity i will continue to speak over your life to be blessed i remember one dear lady years ago one of our, our dear, well not really part but a dear lady it was a few weeks to her wedding when something happened cats had been out several things happened i mean everybody was rejoicing like every other lady she was happy ready to rejoice and then something just went terrible cut the long story short wedding was cancelled I remember when I got the text in my mind I said no my, all I was thinking about is this lady because the same friends that were dancing are the same ones that will run and say ah so you see that that's the thing you do you know this is a dimension of God two men that you need to learn that he's truly a friend that stick it closer than a brother someone who can stand and say I will be with you and all of a sudden the moment they say crucify him they will join the people and say crucify you Many of us don't have the wisdom of the spirit because our lives are too innocent. That's why you trust anybody anyhow. That's why you do anything anyhow. Please listen to what I'm teaching you tonight. Are we together? I remember calling the lady. When I called her, as soon as she picked my call, she started crying. Because people had called her were disappointed. Why didn't you find out A and B and C and D? All kinds of nonsense. See, men, ba, you need to love God to love men. Men can be so wicked, you will be justified to hate them. Are we together? I called that dear lady. I said, sweetheart, where are you? I said, I need to see you. Let's meet in the night. And in her mind, she thought, you know, most times when people hear my messages, they believe that I'm a disciplinarian with all versions of whips. I'm not a stupid person. Are we together? Yes. God gives anointing, but our brains are still there. We are human beings. When I teach, I teach in a preventive way. That's why sometimes you can see I can lash it, but when you are meeting people one-on-one, -on -one, you are dealing with real-life issues. We are humans. It doesn't mean it's not an excuse for you not to listen. To just say, okay, so since there's another dimension, there is hellfire and there's mercy too. All created by God. Are we together? I remember calling that lady. And when she came, I was seeing her inside a car. And the first thing I did was to just hug the lady and she began to cry. And I didn't say a word. 
I just allow sometimes don't stop people from crying too early. These tears you see is not just what comes out in an eye, it's a language. And this lady said, Apostle, why would God do this to me? And I said, No. Every time we don't understand God, we give thanks. It's something I learned through my own pain. It's not like I, I learned it before I read it in the Bible. Whenever you don't understand God, just give thanks. Why me is not a wise thing. Lord, why is my church not growing? Why did this and that and that happen? You give thanks. I remember comforting that dear lady. And I told her something. I said, every time God closes a window, check well, a door is about to open. And I remember when that lady was going to get married. Oh, it was with honor. It was with joy. You know the kind of joy that will make you forget the pain of yesterday. Listen, let me speak to someone. There are many of you who you have not learned to see God in your pain. You have not learned to see God in your challenges. I'm encouraging you tonight. When you look back, don't look at the problems. Continue to look. Mary Magdalene was looking at a graveyard and she saw Jesus there. Jesus is also in the grave. He's not just on the throne. She came to the grave and was looking. Who goes to the grave? Only dead men. There are no living people in the grave. But when you stand through that grave, you can see Jesus looking at you to say, you may have been abused when you were young. You may have gone through all kinds of things, but don't be ashamed of it. I am raising you with an anointing. Tomorrow you are going to have a foundation. One uncle deceived you here and don't worry. And all of a sudden you are healed. You are strengthened and you can rise up and be a blessing. As believers, both our glory and our pains are still weapons that can bring him glory. Is God speaking to someone today? Sometimes I share some of the testimonies of yesteryears, not because I'm stupid. Everybody has his reputation too. I share some of these things and it's amazing how some of these messages comfort some of you. Because if you just see all the things that God is doing today, you may think just because you are anointed, you are shielded from it. Nobody is immune from tears. Jesus wept. Every other person in him will weep too. There are times that life can push you. I've wept at funerals of people here. I have had to comfort people. We have lost loved ones. Things have happened around. But even at that, even when we cannot explain, we still say, Lord, thank you. Lord, thank you. Can you lift your voice in one minute and just say, Lord, thank you. Even in the midst of the pain. In the midst of the pain. Lord, I went through unfavorable things. I trusted a man who disappointed me. I trusted my boss, he disappointed me. Lord, I thought by now I would have graduated. And standing before me are five carryovers. I thought I would get first class, my last result. I thought I would be promoted and I was driven. But I give you thanks. I give you thanks. I may not understand what you are doing in and through me, but Lord, I know that you do all things. I will sing, I will praise, even in my darkest hour, through the sun.
that made you to begin to love people. Yes, sir. You were too innocent and when you see people just complain, oh, my father could not afford my school fees. What an irresponsible father until the day your own father lost him a job and you found out for the first time that dinner could not come. And God said, have you now seen that if I don't help a man, it's not just being irresponsible. Your father is responsible. Yet, except the Lord builds a house, they labor in vain. Let me tell you this. My father calls me a young man with gray hair. My experiences in life have added to my experience. Added to my age. That's why you see me respect elderly people. I am not stupid. There are some of you here, when you see us honor people, you say, what is there? Because your blood is hot. They paid your school fees. They gave you pocket money. You entered 100 level. By the end of 100 level, you have gotten a scholarship. Your result came out 4.5. Your perspective is too innocent to be used. Keep coming. One day, something will happen. By the time you graduate and for five years, there's no job. You will now know why people write prayer requests here. For now, he what is there about prayer requests every month? It's because everything in your life is paid for. The day your father look at you and say, young man, after this month, as we are clocking 30th of this month, you are packing your load and you are going. And you will think he has an honorarium for you. He will just wave you and say, my old father just did bye-bye and I, the same thing I'm doing for you. And for the first day, you will sleep under a tree. That's the day you open your Bible and say, no, I must get this thing. Yes, sir. Don't waste your pain. Some of you would have entered certain anointings by now if only you could look at God through your pain. There is, the Bible says, for we know, the rest may not know, but we know that all things, how many things? Talk to me, say all things. All things. Work together. Apostle, what kind of life is this? I graduated since 2013. I've been loving God. There's no work now for me. Is it that I don't serve God? Apostle, I love God. I love the things of God. But not one guy in my whole life, there's no gentleman that has come to say, ah, you're a beautiful lady. I want to, am I cursed? <clears throat> it's because you are becoming a mother of nations, not a wife. And so God is saying, I need you to have the kind of compassion that will be required for a mother of nations. Today I can minister to people because every time I want to be wary, there is always something God can use from my past. People say apostle is humble. I'm not humble. It's a revelation of God that has kept me like that. The moment I want to lift up my head, God just has to show me one vision of one night I could not afford Gary. And I say, where, where is the pride coming from? Your past can help you maintain your glory. Your past has something in it that can help you keep your glory. When you see a man of God blessed and consistent and stable, there is nothing that is natural like that. There are many of you, you will not have listened to God. Every time they talk to you, you are stubborn towards instruction. So God allowed you. And for one year, like the prodigal son, you went away from mentorship and instructions and you saw the casualties that it brought to your life and now god comes back again and says can i now help you and you say lord please i will never leave you again are we together we'll stop here tonight make it part one we have part two there, there there's something very deep that i want to share i'll share with you next week or whenever whenever it is that we have the opportunity listen to me brothers and sisters I made certain covenants with my life at certain seasons of pain not luxury there were things I went through in my life and I vowed to God I said Lord if you ever prosper me I will not let one person die of hunger in my presence I would not have said that if money and all these resources just came cheaply I may be part of those like you people running your mouth at every family irresponsible people look how simple it is to prosper so there are times God can allow you you go through this you pray you fast no door opens so that when he blesses you with 10 naira 
and says give that 10 naira here you don't want people to lick your shoes just because of that there are certain anointings there are people who got certain impartations early in life you see that early in life and it made them proud what is there about this in fact right now i can even show that the power of god will move one two three four and they make all kinds of things mismanagement of the anointing then one day god will leave them and you find out for one year it looked like your heavens were closed you go for a meeting you live there asking did god call me in the midst of your pain god begins to show you the visions of the foolishness and the pride you insulted every man of god because you had more revelation than your local pastor you insulted him all this 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 dull reverend doesn't know anything and god kept watching when that heaven closed towards you God will now say, go and meet that reverend for prayer. He's the one who will open your heavens. And you drag yourself in shame. Like somebody that has finished fighting wrestling. And the reverend looks at you and says, you, I heard you talk nonsense. God said, you better apologize there. When you learn it, like Samson, the anointing comes back again. But this time around, you know the value of the anointing. Because you believe that you, you are too precious, you won't lose it. You kept reading books that ah this and that happens the day it left you you don't need to ask whether it goes again you learned a lesson by yourself there are some of us who were very innocent we insult every mother you see somebody's mother insult the mother and say Kai, this woman said this and that i sat down near her ah she didn't put any perfume Kai, what kind of a smelly you know this coin on here and god is saying no problem it's because you had a father who was a this and that all of a sudden another government will come and they won't give him appointment and your friends will say ah where's our jeep now he said no jeep again no. and then when they leave you like the prodigal son then you come back to your senses and the next time god gives you a jeep you don't just say come and see jeep you say come and see god's faithfulness it will suddenly become god's faithfulness no longer jeep We're going to pray tonight. I don't know what, what pain you may be going through now. And you are saying, Lord, if you called me, why am I going through this? I'm answering you right now. Lord, why is my life like this? And God is saying, I'm bringing glory. You have called me as a kingdom financier. Lord, I've never held 50,000 of my money. And God says, I need to teach you that. Listen, let me tell you. When God called me into the apostolic ministry, there are few challenges of people I didn't go through. How else do you relate with people? Are we together? There are times people will bless me and God will ask me to sow it. And when I sow it, I'm alone. And I'm saying, God, what is this? Somebody refused to tighten me. I'm tightening my own heavens. Come and you ask me to carry it. And what is that? And it's amazing how God doesn't answer. There are times that God's silence is a training process. It may not be an attack. He's teaching you how to wait. Lord, will you arise? Based on the Bible studies you did, they say if you call him, he is nigh those who call upon him. Yes, it's true. But he's training you. You teach someone how to call God, he's enjoying an express service with God, and you, the tutor, is there under closed heavens and hazy hearing. lord what is this i've been married for five years no child lord what i mean what is the meaning of this you are calling me into ministry and no child and then god says prophesy to all the barren women ha ah, god what embarrassment is this one again and he says do it he's killing the flesh you may not know it's not about a child god can give you a child even in one week he's killing the flesh Tonight, we are going to spend, the way we are going to do this prayer, we will do a general prayer, but before then, I am going to give you five minutes. You are going to find any corner or find anywhere. Listen, before you go, overflow one, two, three, just find somewhere. I would like you to focus and say, Lord, thank you for my pain. I used to hate it. I know that I was raped when I was two years old. I know that I lived alone. I got, I'm the only Christian in my family. And yet, 
I will call on you and it will look like nobody will answer. Lift your voice and pray. You never would have come into the house of the Lord if you were too innocent. There are some of you, you never would have even known that the call of God is upon your life. Lift your voice. Pray. Please be serious tonight. Talk to him in your language. Lord, I thank you. My pain has made me wiser. My pain has made me a woman of compassion. I used to be a heartless woman. I used to be a heartless man. I used to be a very, very uncompassionate man of God. But you have used my disappointment. Now I can look at people and know that they are doing their best. I will insult people again. I used to think ministry was so easy until I carried my anointing and I was surprised that in spite of my being anointed, doors are still closed. Now I know that except God helps a man, it is not the eloquence of speech that can help you. Lord, when I was in the university, I insulted every graduate because I thought they didn't know what they were doing. Now I've been a graduate for 10 years, 20 years, with no job. I now know that if God does not help me, nobody can pray. Lord, show me your glory through my pain. Reveal something in my life through my pain. I've gone through pain. I've gone through disappointment. Lord, I lost my loved ones. I lost my father. I lost my mother. I lost my brothers. It was, and for some of you, it's still a painful experience. But Lord, in the midst of it, there has to be something through my pain that can glorify you. If you never had a spillover, you probably would never be born again. You would be an arrogant graduate. Your promotion was due. Three years now you've not been promoted. Could it be that in that delay, God wants to teach you something? Pray. Oh Lord, let my pain help me know you. Let my challenges help me know you. Give me a new name that you have through this pain. Let my pain not be wasted, oh God. Let me not cry for nothing. If I have cried, let me also see you. If I have been disappointed, let me see you through it.
service and as tired as I am I will stand here for hours seeing people this is why I spend my life traveling around in spite of the pain this is why I give the way I do it's not just because I'm anointed something has happened to me there is a birthing there is a breaking of the outer man the breaking of that flesh when I went through the dark days in my life they helped me make certain vows to God I will never look down on anybody that's why some of our young ones here that are in ministry usually men of God who go ahead like this to some measure look down on the ones who are coming up and make it look like I will never never do that to anybody no matter how small no matter how little I believe in you we can correct you where you need to be corrected and lift you you know why because I know I've been there listen some of you what you are going through now is not for you is for the sake of those you are being sent to God does not want you to arrive at the place of destiny and not be able to relate to the pain of those who are coming so you pay the school fees by yourself and now you are in final year probably and you are wondering oh Lord where will this school fees come from and then by the time God helps you he now tells you like Peter when you are converted strengthen your brethren the next time you see somebody hungry don't criticize and laugh because you know what hunger means we do not have a high priest who cannot be touched touched with the feelings of our infirmity when I was growing up as a little boy I didn't have too much of uncles and aunties to show me the way of the Lord and love me that's why after service you see all these my children come and run they can match me and do anything I love them the way they are because I want to show them that being an adult is not a cause against children something about your character can only be changed through your pain something about your hardness to the voice of God can only be changed through your pain something about your rebellion to his instructions can only be changed through your pain a sermon will not change it there is something you must go through I'm sorry but it's true sometimes that disappointment God will have the power to stop it but he will leave it he will make sure it does not hurt you to the point where it's unbearable but he will need you to learn something in it it's a painful experience but it's called a circumcision when you circumcise a child that child does not laugh while you are circumcising him but do you stop the circumcision because the child is crying no that's what is happening to you so for some of you right now I wish the prayer will be oh God take away the challenge sincerely for some of you the prayer is Isaiah 43 Lord be with them as they pass through that fire because for some of you you are not coming out of that fire soon that fire is doing something to you I know you will not like me for what I'm saying but I am telling you allow that fire to refine you and you will look and not see pride in your life again allow that fire to refine you and you will look and see the anointing you are admiring on TV is with you in the fire people don't become anointed on the throne they become anointed in the cave of Adullam I want you to pray one serious prayer just one prayer Lord whatever training you are passing me through continue to pass me through until I become like a trophy it's not a dangerous prayer it's a sensible prayer for mature believers God will not kill you no Lord you have spoken to me about prosperity that you are giving me a mantle for wealth and Lord I've seen how money has destroyed people whatever oh God needs to prove my appetite to make me not use money to destroy my life and others work on me Lord you told me I will have a level of fame through the anointing and the, the revelatory gifts of the Spirit pride is inevitable the tendency for pride is there so Lord work on me let that circumcision happen to me Break me, O oh God. 
Whatever needs to be broken, let it be broken. Whatever needs to be pruned, let it be pruned. Are you praying? Only mature people can pray this prayer. Take away the pride, oh God. Lord, I don't have a heart of mercy. Use my pain to make me merciful to others. I have a critical spirit. But oh God, through my challenges, give me a heart that loves people. I find people who do not hold my viewpoints in life. Do something in me that grants me compassion. That the next time I hear that something is happening to someone, I will be the first to show love, not to show hate. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If the people who write all these blogs against men of God, if the people who go to families carrying gossips heard this message that I'm preaching to you, they will have enough compassion to know. Are we together? Yes. A gentleman, I'm sure that gentleman is here. He met me a few days. I'm, I'm, I'm saying it because his life is a testimony. Something happened to this guy and he got into a lifestyle that was not the best. And he went to jail. He just came out of prison not too long. And when that guy came out of prison, I mean, everything had gone academic. A, a whole year had gone ahead of him. And when the gentleman came and met me and said, Apostle, this is what happened. I used to be a thief. I used to steal and I used to do drugs. And so they apprehended me, you know, I was guilty and I went to prison. I looked at him. That gentleman was so rehabilitated. And I looked at him. He said, I'm ready to go and finish up. I said, what level are you? He said, this and that. I looked at him. I said, young man, hold my hands. I love you and I believe in you. And I'm going to do my best to make sure that you catch up with your colleagues and finish. Even if it means covering your school fees, I will do it. I'm not stupid. It's not because I have money. Are we together? That could have been your brother. That could have been your sister. Maybe that could have been me. In a cell. There is nobody I do not believe that God can lift. There is nobody. You see, when you see God trusting a man of God with people, God sees the heart of men first before helping them. When God sees that you have a wicked and a depraved heart that will destroy the destinies of people, you will never be trusted. I preached a message earlier this year, can God trust you? Not can God use you? Yes, he can. But can God trust you? There are people, let me say this with all humility, if they have half the anointing that is on my life, you will have to lick their legs. You see it with the tendencies that are around people. Let me tell you this. We're, we're still, I'm going to show you. There are still some points. I don't want to go ahead of myself. I will show you how to curb some of these excesses in your life. If you don't create a system by grace of self-supervision against these things, especially pride. Pride is a killer. It will shred you into pieces and cover you in the dust of impact. And they will know that once upon a time, there was a mighty man. Once, there are many once upon a times. Many. Alive but dead. I pray to God all the time and say, Lord, please preserve your son. Preserve your testimony. He won't stop till we lose just like him. He won't stop. He won't stop till we lose just like him. God is birthing something strange in these days. God is revealing something new in our midst he won't stop he won't stop until we lose just like him he won't stop he won't stop 
1 Timothy 4 verse 1 now the spirit expressly says that in the latter times some will depart from the faith giving heed to deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons stop the bible says in the latter time there are certain people who for some reason will depart from the faith and will begin to give heed to what deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons very interesting it didn't say doctrines that were taught by demons doctrines that were manufactured from the pit of hell and brought taught accurately by demons verse 2 speaking lies in hypocrisy and having their own conscience seared with hot iron verse 3 forbidding to marry and commanding to abstain from food which god has created to be received with thanksgiving by those who believe and know the truth the last verse was for for every creature of god is good and nothing is to be refused if it's received with thanksgiving let's just stop there hallelujah we are examining three things tonight tonight we're going to be studying the scripture hallelujah everybody say i receive light when when our eyes are open we will be able to mature and comprehend the things of the spirit deeper let me tell you something listen do you know what scares demons and principalities and powers it's not the statue of a man or woman are you getting my point it's not your english it's not your degree hallelujah but the degree of light the degree of light when you see the spiritual structure of a believer you can know his level in the spirit by the degree of light are you following me now so at the mount of transfiguration jesus revealed to us how his spirit man was are you getting me it was light so bright that the people could not comprehend it and every time we come before his presence by revelation we keep contending to attain unto that dimension of light and the degree to which we conform to that light is the degree to which we rise to maturity and that's a product of revelation the difference between revelation and information is that revelation transforms information just gives you awareness if it is revelation it must change you it was designed to change you if you truly understand it hallelujah praise the lord the bible says in the latter days verse one again please that men will give room to deceiving spirits who are these spirits where did they come from what is their ministry please pay attention brothers and sisters we are in a day an age that if you lack spiritual intelligence you will die are you following me now we need it as a matter of urgency in every generation there is always a contention of light and darkness there are people who just go around as social beings but there are certain people who understand spiritual things and are anointed to communicate the counsel of god to make sure that the banner of the kingdom is lifted throughout that generation and we happen to be that generation so it's important for everybody to pay attention there's a lot of error going on in the body of christ listen please hallelujah and the error that is going on in the body of christ is so deep it calls for immediate response hallelujah if we do not respond to the tragedy that is happening in the body of christ and we allow this jezebel to strangle away the prophets of god if elijah's do not arise a time will come there will be no prophets who will speak 
the counsel of God. Are you following me now? There's a lot going on in the body of Christ, the continent of Africa, and especially our dear country, Nigeria. Nigeria is the firstborn of Africa. We are the model to the, the continent of Africa in terms of spirituality. Hallelujah. And it's important that we preserve the things of the spirit. There are three errors in the body of Christ that we trust God to address and correct tonight. Hallelujah. It's called apostasy. You know what apostasy is? Apostasy is a departure from the accurate truth of God's word. A departure I preached a message, I think it was last year or year before last, the apostate church, you can get it and listen. A departure from, not, listen, listen, please. I, I don't mean the departure from a doctrine. I mean a departure from the known patterns of God. Everything about the building of God's kingdom is not left for the discretion of man. Are you following me now? There is a pattern. God in his nature will not allow man Build his kingdom his own way. It has always been the character of God to create a pattern for man to access him. So apostasy is when by the activity of wicked spirits, men begin to deviate from the accurate pattern of God. And the Bible says this will happen in the latter times that some will depart from the faith what faith christianity no 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 god never called us christians what is the faith the pattern there is a pattern that our fathers followed they knew something that made them walk with god they knew something that made the, the kingdom of darkness quake before them and there is a gradual deviation please listen to me the church in Nigeria is deviating fast. And there's got to be an, an intervention of Elijah. Because the few prophets of God who are left in the country are facing a lot. Jezebel is, is prospering on our pulpits, in our churches, across different places and the prophets of god the true prophetic and apostolic voices are being quieted until elijah rises and that there be an open contention between light and darkness to return the body of christ back to pattern otherwise we are going to lose it and we'll miss it not just as a continent not just as a nation but as a people hallelujah say amen Thank you, Jesus. Matthew 13, verse 25. Matthew 13. Jesus began to explain to us the tragedy that will befall the church. Matthew 13. Shepa kata balada bakurati shebalana. Let's start from verse 23. Or 24. Let's, let's make it 24. And another parable he put forth to them saying, The kingdom of heaven is like a man who sowed good seed. That man, listen, that man is God and his purposes and counsel. So how did it start? It started with good seed. Is that true? He sowed good seed. He created a pattern. But something happened 25 the first four words one two go but while men this is how the spirit of the antichrist began to enter the church it began to cause men to sleep the bible says that a time came when the eyes of eli started getting dim and remember the bible says the eye is the light of the body 
that means if your eyes close there is no more light no more illumination there's no more access to divine things and the bible says that the eye of eli started getting very dim and that continued until it got to a point where men slept hallelujah while men slept when they began to intercourse with babylon when they began to respond to the promptings of this antichrist system when they began to do ministry by doctrines and patterns and methods that are not consistent with the way of god the bible says they started giving heed to deceiving spirits are you following me please and they started embracing the doctrines of demons and men slept and then the enemy came and did what so tears this is what is happening to the nigerian church there is a mixing of that which is authentic with that which is counterfeit and all of them are being mixed in our churches in our parishes in our assemblies and right now there is so much confusion it will take the accurate eye of the eagle that is brought forth by the spirit of elijah to divide between bones and marrow and show the church that no matter how this looks this is not of god hallelujah because the bible tells us something verse 26 it says but when the grain had sprouted and produced a crop then the tears also did what appear that means when they sowed it it was there as a tendency but it had not yet manifested are you getting my point now a lot of people started ministry hearing the voice of god but they did not stay in the spirit for the holy ghost to keep walking walking on them and pruning out anything that does not become like christ eventually as the ministry started expanding as the membership started expanding they noticed a strange thing happening in the assemblies that there were also tears that were growing verse 27 it says so the servants of the owner came and said sir did you not sow good seed in other words who gave these pastors this message where did this rema come from where did this doctrine these revelations that we have built ministries we have held conventions and meetings with teachings that have no bearing with the patterns of the kingdom the bible says they ask a question did you not sow good seed what happened on the way how then does it have tears 28 this is what made a lot of men of god think that what they are doing is right because in the wisdom of god and for the sake of we the elect of god he said no the, see he said the enemy has done this and the servant said to him do you want us to go and gather them that means should we start pruning he said ah in the midst of these tears there are genuine people they are not strong enough to stand the heat of separation so let them grow verse 28 29 now he says but he said no less while you gather up the tears you will also hurt the wheat are you getting my point now and so god allowed many churches and many ministries to grow in spite of their wrong doctrines money was still coming are you getting my point membership was still coming and because of that a lot of people thought it was an endorsement that they were doing the right things but right now the spirit of elijah is suddenly showing up because the 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 wheat has become matured enough for the separation to begin to take place and the bible says 30 now let both grow together so no problem let the church grow even with the error no problem i will have a way by my wisdom to manage it but a day will come the separation will happen are you getting my point now there are so many people that have stood upon our pulpits and said a lot of things that have god has no hand in it at all there are many conventions in this country that god has no business with what is going on are you getting me they have organized god out of church programs they have gone for ministers conferences and imbibed doctrines of demons by men and women who have no altar at all 
hallelujah and the bible says let them both grow so they came back applied these things and it seemed to be producing results but right now it has gotten to a point where it's destroying the remnant of the house of god and except the spirit of elijah arises and addresses it the casualty will be too much it says until the harvest and at the time of the harvest i will say unto the reapers this is a strategy first gather together what this is why we are beginning to attack these things because the season of the harvest is here the bible says you guys are farmers speaking to the nation of israel he said there is a way you can look at the atmosphere and you will know that the harvest is near and bind them in bundles to burn them but gather the wheat into my barn so it started with good seed the man of god started as a genuinely anointed person the ministry started as an authentic ministry but eventually while men began to sleep the bible says a little sleep a little slumber a little folding of the eyes and it says poverty is not just lack deprivation of all sorts whether spiritual material and otherwise will come upon you suddenly like an arm bandit so these men began to sleep hallelujah and it was in that sleep you see this is listen how many of you have read the story of samson and delilah samson was a type of the church delilah was a wicked spirit are you getting my point now notice that samson was called to be a judge over israel and the bible says savior shall arise everything in the bible is prophetic it's an adumbration of something an adumbration means a foreshadow are you getting me a prophetic preplay of something that would happen samson was a man who was strong and he terrorized the philistines and then the bible notice every time men who symbolize the government of god appeared it was women that threw them down not women they were physical entities but this woman you know why woman because women have the capacity to give birth and reproduce their kind again this is why the bible calls this babylon this harlot in revelation 17 it says she's a woman that sits upon a beast that has seven horns seven heads and ten horns are you learning something tonight a terrible tragedy happening in the body of christ and listen when delilah came to samson she studied his weakness are you getting my point she carefully studied it she did not come with a sword i want to show you the mystery of men sleeping and the bible said she came and she donated her lap free of charge for him correct the first time you see the nature of the glory of god is that the glory of god does not depart suddenly when the glory of God in the vision that was shown Ezekiel, when it was leaving the temple, it left slowly. But adventure, the people would realize and repent. Hallelujah. The first time it happened, notice what is a woman looking for? Trying to know the source of a man's strength. She didn't say marry me. She didn't say sleep with me. She didn't say give me money. Are you following me now? she kept saying samson tell me the mystery behind your strength all she was concerned about was his anointing because it was with that anointing he will conquer the spirit of the antichrist are you getting me she wanted to kill the source of his strength and she found out that there was a relationship between his eyes his hair and his strength that was why when she captured him the first thing that happened was his hair the second thing that happened was his eyes I need you to know that all these women you see in the bible they were not normal they were envoys of demonic entities because they did certain things that did not make sense for instance why will herodias ask her daughter for dancing well she said make sure you tell the king that i want the head of john the baptist what do you do with head 
are you getting my point now there are many things that happen in bible that if you don't read with the spirit of revelation this is the error that many people have carried they have just read it theologically and they have bought for doctrines that are not accurate but the spirit of elijah comes dividing the word of god accurately hallelujah all through scripture we'll do a quick drive if it's possible as we as we continue and let me show you that disguising through people and stories has been the same battle the battle of light and darkness are you getting my point now for instance the bible tells us that before the coming of the lord again there will be a repetition of the days of noah did you read that in your bible what happened in the days of noah because you see when satan fell when satan fell there are so many things in my head now Let, let's just continue wherever we stop do you know what satan told the angels that made them to comply don't you think satan would have told them something that was really captivating for them to leave their estate and to come down to partner with him are you getting my point now because of satan's access to the presence of god he had knowledge of mysteries and the bible tells us that this man called satan or then the son of the morning rebelled he had a he had a political ambition all this ambition didn't start from the politicians there is a spirit and he he made this manifesto clear in isaiah 8 uh, in, in 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 um uh what now isaiah 14 now i will do this i want to arise above the stars of god i want to be like the most high that was his manifesto but he deceived all of these people and when he was casted down he was casted together with a lot of other angels hallelujah and then when adam came i told you again that the garden of eden is not in the earth realm are you getting me that's why they cannot find it the garden of eden is still intact you go to the book of revelation you see the garden of eden still there with the tree of life nobody has taken anything that garden was withdrawn are you getting me it was a supernatural sphere the reason is look at the things that covered the garden a cherub and a flaming sword can a cherub and a flaming sword just cover something that is just three-dimensional hallelujah and man was driven out of that garden but there was a prophecy and this it was that prophecy that started this great battle are you getting me the seed of the woman shall bruise the head of the serpent and satan knows that every time jesus speaks he already has a strategy are you getting me please follow this when one of the errors that i want to correct i hope we'll be able to establish it is how many of you have heard of that thing called familiar spirits have you heard that statement i will show you the origin of the activity of what we call familiar spirits familiar spirits are not just out to monitor your life they are out to monitor the strategy of the spirit for every season help us lord help us lord help us lord where do we start from okay are you getting my story now and then when adam and eve when adam knew his wife and she gave birth to cain listen please satan thought that cain was going to be the person that god will use because they he knew that god would need a man are you getting me so satan entered cain are you getting my point now see i'm talking of the activity please let's go to first timothy 4 verse 1 again the, i want to show you the ministry of these deceiving spirits can you see where it started from lucifer deceive the angels are you getting my point now and they came down when man fell deceived eve satan always changes the patterns of god 
because every time God, when God designed family, please listen. And, and, and ladies, you have to listen. This is a very powerful message. When God designed family, I hope you know that God made man the head of that family. Is that true? That means any correspondence through God according to his structure should go to the man. Notice how Satan changed it. Satan went to the woman. Are you getting me? And everywhere you see the manifestation of his spirit, the woman there, that figure tries to usurp it on the man. Jezebel. Are you seeing now? Herodias. And all of these kinds of people. This is what the Bible calls the devices of the enemy. Stratomai, the Greek word. His methodology. It may have changed and metamorphosed through seasons. But the pattern is the same. That means when you sustain the eye of prophecy, you can detect him at once. Are you learning something, please? So Cain is born and Satan makes a bargain with Cain. And Cain begins to manifest another spirit. And then the Bible says how that Abel shows up. And Satan suspecting that God may use Abel began to move Cain to kill Abel. Are you seeing why Cain? Why will Cain kill his brother? See, it's time for you to begin to study the word not just to get sermons, but for spiritual knowledge. Ask questions. Why will Cain just kill the, his brother? What for? Are you getting my point now? When Cain killed his brother, in a passage of time, the Bible says Cain started building a city. The Bible never told us that Cain was an architect. What made him to start lusting after building a city? It was the spirit of the Antichrist. Are you seeing? Because God wanted to build a city and name it after his son. So the spirit of the Antichrist through Cain built a city and named it after Enoch, his son. And that was where atrocity started from. Are you getting my point now? And then it got to the time of Noah. God suffered long with them. When it got to the time of Noah, listen to me, listen to me. Noah was a very strange man. He was not just an old bald headed man. Noah walked with God. Are you getting me? Noah had a manuscript that he used to build the ark. The ark was not just built carelessly of gopher wood and so on and so forth. It was a prophetic message. Are you getting my point now? Noah had secrets that he knew that made him the head of the spiritual activity of that generation. He talked with God. He communicated with God. He understood the mystery of the flood. And that was the reason why, listen, please, listen, listen. When they came out, Shem, Ham, and Japheth, there were eight people again. Satan started looking for somebody else to enter. Are you getting my point? So Satan entered Ham. Are you getting my point? And the Bible says he saw his father's nakedness. He did not just see his father's nakedness. It's a coded word. He saw into the secret of what Noah was supposed to preserve. Why will a man curse his son for just seeing his nakedness and say you will be a servant of servants? Is that cost not too much just for seeing a man's nakedness? What of children that take care of their parents in the hospital and have to bath them and do other things? It was beyond just seeing a physical nakedness. It was opening something spiritual that he was not prepared for. It was, it was every time men shifted from God's patterns, they suffered. This was why he caused Cain. I mean harm. And the cause that was given to harm, if you read your Bible very well, was that he was going to serve his brothers. Is that true? Now, Satan found expression through harm. Go to Genesis 11. Don't you, I mean, you don't need to open it. But go to Genesis 11. What happened? Suddenly, another wizard who was the son of Cush, who was from the lineage of Ham. Are you seeing now? A man called Nimrod. Nimrod. Strange man. Just appeared from nowhere. A man who commanded such power. He was a lord. Are you getting my point now? How did Nimrod gain so much influence? And the Bible says Nimrod was a hunter. We never saw one animal that Nimrod hunted. What was he hunting? 
I will show you in the book of Revelation that he was hunting for souls. Because Satan suddenly realized that destroying men is not the way. So he says, let's adopt them and use them rather than killing them. Are you, are you getting my mystery tonight? The Bible says it has been given unto us to know the mysteries of the kingdom. There are things you understand that the devil will run away from you. Because he knows that light has brought everything that is darkness to bear. Are you getting my point now? The problem with we preachers is that we just cut a lot of stories and tell people things that when they join the puzzles together, it doesn't make sense. Listen, listen. I think I was talking to um, the, the, the music director and, and the worship team chairman. They came over to my place and I told them that I have been criticized for a lot of things. One of it is this faith thing. I believe in faith, but I've said this thing again and again years ago. That faith doesn't have to be on something you don't understand. Are you getting my point? The true concept of faith is not just built on shadows that cannot be understood. I said it last week. No pilot sits on a plane and says, passengers... I trust God that will arrive safely. I've never learned how to fly this plane, but you guys just sit back, sit back and, 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 and enjoy. There's Jehovah Jireh, there's Jehovah Sikenu, there's our banner and all of that. And then the people sit down and say, Hallelujah, let's just be confessing. We will arrive. We will arrive. Plane corporate. We are now at 3,000 feet. Nobody does that. Are you getting my point now? So, faith is not a mystery. It has been turned to look like anything in the kingdom you just understand. Just You don't understand. Just accept by faith. Have you had teachings like that? God said it. I may not understand it. I don't care. I, want, I don't want to understand it. All I know is that Satan is the bad guy. Jesus is the bad guy. We are for Jesus. Let's win him. This is what Americans are, are shipping into Nigeria. And we are laughing and receiving it. And holding massive conventions and misleading people. Whereas the Bible says, do not be unaware of the stratomai. Satan is not an idiot. He has a, a strategy. This guy stayed close to the presence of God. Are you learning something tonight? So you see it, Nimrod Kush. He said, go to let us build a city. Build a city again. The same city that Cain tried to build. And then the judgment of Noah canceled everything. Now he says, let us build a city and let us make a name for ourselves. Listen, when you study Bible history, please listen. I want to show you the origin of occultism and witchcraft. Are you following me now? Don't say it does not concern you. The word is making you mature believers. Are you getting my point now? Do you know the origin of this thing we call occultism and witchcraft? Nimrod Kush, according to Bible history, was the son of Kush who married a woman called Samiramai. Are you getting me? And because, listen please, this is very, very important. Samiramai was a witch. These were people that were possessed. They were incarnates of hell. Are you getting my point? Envoys that wanted to continue the agenda of God. Samiramai killed Kush, her husband. Are you getting me? And Satan came and interpolated this thing. Satan came and made Nimrod to believe that in this new move and in this kingdom, he was going to make him Lord. He was going to be great. And the price for that is that he will aberrate the normal progression of, of human beings. And then Nimrod married his mother. Are you getting my point now? So Nimrod married. Are you seeing how Satan was twatting the, the, do I call it the genetic code of human beings? Nimrod married his mother. Can you imagine? Now the son, I don't know what, what they are going to call the son now. Huh? His mother is still his grandmother. As ugly as it is, listen. This was the mystery of what began to happen. 
to Nimrod. Nimrod was a hunter of souls. His job was to exert so much influence that he would bring people to himself because in Revelation, when he began to tell us about this mystery Babylon and all the commodities she does business with, it called the souls of men. Is that true? Is that true? There's no time. You see, God, this time thing, I wish like, I feel like busy seeing this watch. Praise God. <laughs> you just sing praise and worship and it's 10 o'clock. <laughs> praise God. Kai. This time is limited. Bear with us, honestly. These are not the kinds of things that you don't just come and share a message and it's boiling in my spirit because I want us to get it. Praise the Lord. Are you understanding my story? All through scripture, when you trace, you will see that this spirit looks for women in every generation that will represent its operation and look for men that will compromise are you getting me that was where witchcraft and so on and so forth started and then all these things called divination and necromancers all of these things happened when saul was king there's no time but i hope you read your bible very well you remember that remember when saul was king saul dealt with diviners and necromancers is that true he frustrated them so much according to scripture there was only one woman that was left one sorcerer one necromancer and the bible says a time came when saul slept and he deviated all right it didn't use that exact word but i'm just using it when saul deviated from the things of god he went to go and consult her is it in your bible and when she met him he he, he concealed himself and she said ah don't disturb me Saul, is, Saul has made life bad for us. No business in this city again. And he said, no problem. I vow I will not tell Saul. And he said, whose spirit should I invoke? I'm going to show you how men of God operate what you call the prophetic. That they invoke the spirit of the dead. Correct? It's happening in many churches. Somebody dies and they invoke the spirit of that dead person. I want to show you how they use necromancy. And when they do that, they invoke that. And the Bible says she invoked in her vision. She was seeing an old man coming. And Saul, and Saul told her, I said, who do you, do you see him? Tell me about his appearance. And Saul from and Samuel now seemingly from the vision told her the man that is standing with you is Saul. And she turned, she said, ah, ah. Are you not Saul? He said, ah, sorry, it's true. I'm Saul. But call me the spirit of Samuel. You think that was Samuel? He looked like Samuel. Talked like Samuel. Where did this spirit come from? I want to show you. See, it didn't start with Africa. So don't let westernization tell you these things are unnecessary. They have been there in scripture. And if we don't gain knowledge of this truth, we will die like mere men. Hallelujah. Help us, Lord. Diviners and different people. Let me tell you something that happened. See, most of these entities that you call, how many of you have heard of demons being disembodied spirits? Have you heard that word? Disembodied spirits. What does that mean? That means that there are spirits that do not have a body to find expression is that true that means they are consistently under frustration jesus himself taught us that when that spirit leaves a man it becomes restless because they need material medium to communicate there is a law in the earth realm that if you do not have a body you cannot function here are you getting my point let me tell you how this demon started i hope we have time can i talk to you see the bible says listen demons are not the uh, they are not the only wicked entities in the satanic kingdom demons are just a class of wicked spirits there are others for instance principalities they are not demons are you getting me i have come to the end of myself take over jehovah I have touched the end of myself. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
I have come to the end of myself. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I have come to the end of myself. Listen. I hope you believe what I'm telling you. Listen. How many of you have seen certain people, maybe those who do a lot of occultic things, when they leave their body, they make sure they close the room so that nobody comes to push their body. You know why? Because they must return the same way they left. If you shift their body, they are not dead, but the spirits cannot return to the body again. Are you understanding what I'm saying? There are many spiritual entities like that in the spirit realm. Please listen to me. I want to tell you some things that will bless you. We said this is a year of light. This is solid meat. Light that keeps you in command. Dominion will happen naturally. You don't claim it. Light brings you into it. Are you getting my point? We are, we are demystifying this deity called Satan. Once and for all. So that you will know that the church will truly be a victorious church. Listen. Satan led these demon spirits. Are you getting, I mean angels now. Are you getting my point? Now this was what, because it is within the character of angels to translate themselves. Is that true? That means they can change state. There are different kinds of angels. Maybe when we deal with angels, we talk, there is a northern army. There are different, there are messenger angels. There are cherubs, there are seraphs. There are different kinds of angels. Now, Satan led a campaign and told these guys, together with, I've, I've, I said it the last time, Apollyon, Leviathan, have you heard of all these spirits? They were real spirits together. Satan didn't just do a loan. It was supposed to be that he would spearhead the rebellion. And if it worked, it would be chop by chop. So all the demons that helped him, are you getting my point now? <laughs> when you read the book of Psalms and see the things that the psalmist began to speak, you will see that the spirit of revelation was upon him. Hallelujah. Are you getting blessed? Can we continue? All right. Please make sure you are listening. This is not... Let me tell you something with revelation. If you get too used to it, the devil can use it and kill you. Are you getting my point? He won't kill you just by oppressing you. He will make you so puffed up. Revelation that should deliver you is not delivering you. But anybody who wants to talk to you, you will begin to break these scriptures. And say, let me give you a rundown of how everything started. And then it's not... Help. This is what is happening. So we must open up ourselves and please listen i'm serious and contend for change this is not to equip you to now run to your fellowship or your church and say for the next four months i have a message and this is what people do and then start running and say ah i must do this i must do this there are angels there's apollyon have you heard of him and they say wow from whence cometh this kind we have not seen it in this fashion the goal of revelation is not entertainment brothers and sisters is to equip you with light that dispels every darkness hallelujah now listen these angels translated themselves are you getting my point in the days of noah and they started having intercourse with women physical women that means you know that the child they will give birth to will not be pure human that's the origin of giants are you seeing that that's why the children that they had six fingers six to superhuman abilities can i surprise you that breed is still in the earth today this is what scientists saw that they call x-men what is x former what was the revelation behind their producing these films you were just watching and eating popcorn in cinema and nodding whereas this is a mystery they know a war is coming all of these scientific films keep telling you a war is coming and that battle is between mankind and another race this was the whole subject of lord of the rings and they had to consult other kingdoms and bring their kings together and it was a human 
I, one little boy called Frodo that carried the ring, a symbol of authority. All the other kingdoms backed him up. These things are spiritual messages. This science is through, through zodiac and, and astrology and all kinds of divination. They can peep into spiritual things. It's not that they know the future. Are you getting me? How do I put it now? Help me. Look at me. How many of you know which countries are ahead of Nigeria time wise? What? What is UK? How can you say UK? Us, let's, let's just assume, please listen, we, we don't have time. Let's assume Australia. How many of you know that when Australia is saying 18th, we are still in 17th? So that ability to peep ahead, that's what happens in the realm of the spirit. Because of the regulation of times and seasons. Are you getting my point? It, this is what is adumbrated in geography. That it is possible for one region to begin to access certain things before the other one. It happens in the spirit too. And this is the principle of divination. Help us, Lord. Take me to the place, the place you are, that secret place. Take us, Lord. That's where I want to be. Take me to the place, the place you are. The secret, place. the secret place that's where i want to be that's where i want to be let's rush error number one i touched it in the realities of heaven and hell but i just feel like touching it again because the message didn't strike the chord the way i want so i want to touch on the issue again messages from hell divine realms that's number one error that needs to be L listen to me i don't know how many women have shaved their hair sold their covered shoes and did a lot of things because listen this is a very serious message right now certain people claim they went to heaven or went to hell listen i explain all these planes to you and you will see sense in what i'm saying now and they brought the core message in the body of christ now is not the bible again is who came with what from where are you getting my point these are the deceiving spirits and the doctrines of demons remember the bible says if god did not cut the time even we the elect can be deceived what kind of great deception can make people to see a lie and take it as true are you getting my point it must be a great deception so what is it the bible says or the people the story somebody just comes back oh i went to hell and then you print cds you print books now there are a few people who will trust their experiences very few as a matter of fact they were the initial people people like like um what's her name mary baxter and so on and so forth all these many things that they do now those people when they came back they even gave the cds free because of how much they wanted to be dissociated with this world huh but right now what we have is nonsense and there are many church pastors in an attempt to show piety and response to spiritual things this is the result of sleep they invite all these people these, these people and they come back uh, they come to pulpit and cry ah i went to hell i saw your mother i thought your mother died she gave me a message it's her name not jane you say yes my mother's name is jane i saw jane i saw jane she was crying in hell and she could talk crying have you have you seen a house catching fire have you seen the people inside listen please this is not criticism please i'm just addressing something this is the spirit of elijah are you getting what i'm saying A lot of people came with revelations those of you inside outside if you are hearing me shout praise the lord 
listen. These revelations are destroying churches right now. Destroying families. Are you getting my point? People came, ah, you went to hell. Why did you go to hell? Your skirts didn't reach here. Why did you go to hell? Okay, um, this pastor, you were supposed to drop five naira. What, where is the five naira? That's where you are going. Somebody went to hell seemingly and brought back the list of the names of almost every man of God alive right now that they are sure candidates of hell. This is somebody that got born again. He was not up to three weeks and he seemingly went to hell. I will show you the mystery of what is happening. I wish we have time tonight. I would have shown you something powerful. It's the strategy of the devil. The people are innocent. Are you getting my point? Don't be angry at the people. They do not even know that they themselves are under deception. Paul says, I was caught up to the third heaven. That means there are other heavens. There is the astral realm. There are a lot of other realms. There are galaxies. All of these galaxies and planets. I hope you know some of them have inhabitants. This is the mystery of aliens. This is the mystery of aliens. There is a lot of story we don't know in the earth. They just gave birth to you in the middle of history. Is what they taught you from social studies to what again? Social science. History, government. And then you read political science or whatever it is. And you believe you know the world. No. There is a lot more. There is a lot more. Hallelujah. There is a lot more. There is a lot in this earth realm that we have. There are portals in this realm. There are many people you see in the earth realm that are not pure human beings. They are moving like you. They talk. You've eaten with some of them in the restaurant. They are not pure breeds. These are agents of darkness preparing for the revival that is coming. I read an article as far back as 19... I have the documentary as a matter of fact about people who went underground. Is that true? They went underground. And they saw a place designed by aliens that can see 20,000 people. And there is an altar in the middle. When you stand in that altar and talk, they will hear you everywhere. No mic. Verified scientifically. Don't you know there is a world under the earth? Philippians chapter 2. That every knee is not just talking about hell alone. What have they not told us, brothers and sisters, that is responsible? I will show you how this applies. So that you will see how your family got into it. Your innocent father from the village was just moving around. Nothing missing, nothing broken. He entered into what he didn't understand. Look at what a lot of believers are suffering in today. And one of the error, one of the error that I wanted to talk about is the negligence of spiritual laws. Many of us have, listen, listen, and I don't say this to criticize. There is an exaggeration of what we call the grace message. I've said this thing again and again. Please don't be offended. I'm just telling you the truth in love. There is a jurisdiction to which when the grace message steps out, it will be misleading there are people right now that they almost don't read the old testament you open they say what are you doing with the law i have a question what is law what really is law what is the cause of the law that christ redeemed us from is it ten commandments is it other mosaic laws or ten commandments plus them is it spiritual laws a lot of people speak and say ah oh, all of this law is gone there's nothing law nothing again but you believe in the law of sowing and reaping and you teach give and it will be given and a lot of people say even god cannot do anything so which part of the law has been abolished we'll talk about that in another teaching we have a lot of series this is a year of light we trust god to open our eyes not to go and start criticizing people but to be the light a reference the devil is in trouble this year 
there are things i will explain to you you will never be afraid of death again there are things i will explain to you you will know that even this mystery thing called deliverance you will understand who are these people that follow people quietly to church and come and sit down and later you say in the name of jesus and all of these kinds of things we will explain it when you understand this i'm telling you you will just start laughing you won't even pray let me tell you there are two ways to bind the devil one is prayer the other is revelation when authentic light enters you you grow out of some things at once deliverance is going on right now it's just that many people their concept of deliverance is ah you fall down i want to cough i want to no no it's not it doesn't necessarily mean you have to do those things light is what drives away darkness permanently you see that's why if if i deliver dosing for instance i lay hands on her and she rolls 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 and stands up listen and there is no light do you know why certain deliverances are so easy it's not because the man is powerful the demons are mocking the man he has no spiritual intelligence they just stroll out and allow him to go and he feels wow at once as soon as the person goes out they use anger or something and enter back together with the seven that they have gathered this is why you find out that there are many churches and men of god struggling with deliverance again because the whole service from morning till night is deliverance there is a balance he sent forth his word and his word he led them and delivered them but my only trouble is what people call word is not what god is calling word because their word is not healing their word is not delivering that means it's not the word look at me ella is a fair lady if i tell you ella is coming to see you expect a fair lady tying something in her head with with a ribbon or what is that thing you see that are you getting me if i suddenly decide to come am i ella if i tell you my name is ella this is how many people's revelation i'm sending the word it will do this right now it's not doing it and the bible says if it is the word some things should happen so if it's not happening it's not the word it may be scripture the word listen the word is not just this are you getting me because until the apostles came there was no manuscript but the people understood the word so what did they call their word what did they call their word of god he said ye are clean through the words that i've spoken to you that word can clean you that's what he's doing now So divine revelations let's just look at one scripture luke 16 let's settle this issue once and for all please can we look at just one scripture we may not be able to touch the honestly there are three issues i thought we'll be able to talk about okay we are there there was a certain rich man which was clothed in purple royalty and fine linen and fed sumptuously every day 20 and there was a certain beggar named lazarus listen every time jesus mentioned name it was not a parable necessarily it was a real experience you understand in jesus's parables he described men by what they did not their names which was laid at his gate are you seeing the contrast now it says full of what source verse 21 and desiring to be fed with the crumbs so on and so forth 24 okay no 23 i saw something i'm looking for there ah we've gone far can we go to 22 let's start from there and it came to pass that who died that's lazarus right lazarus died and was carried by the angels to abraham's bosom that's another issue there hallelujah and the rich man also died and was buried so two of them died they've now left the earth let's see the drama that happened 23 and in hell so a definite place hell is that true he lifted up his eyes 
been in torment and seeth Abraham afar off. All right, that's Abraham's bosom, and I'll tell you why. And Lazarus, hey, I had a revelation, brothers and sisters, that opened me up. Do you know that unlike the teachings we have been teaching, that Abraham could not give birth because he was impotent, is not true. Abraham slept with Hagar. Did she get pregnant? What is the impotency about him? This was simple logic. I said, come on. Ah, is this not the Abraham we are saying? It is the deadness of his body. And this, this guy slept with, with uh, Hagar. And Hagar was strategically positioned by Satan. In that place. See, when I show you these things and as we explore, you will see may God help and redefine our Christianity you will see that Jacob was not a thief Jacob was replacing what happened between Isaac and Ishmael you see that that thing that looked like <laughs> that's why it's not called God of Abraham Isaac and Esau it's called God of Ab didn't, is God blind didn't he see Esau it's called God of Abraham Isaac and And in hell he lifted up his eyes being in torment and seared abraham afar off and lazarus in his bosom so it was in abraham's bosom all right 23 and he cried and said this is the man now in hell father abraham have mercy on me and send lazarus that he may dip the thing dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue for i am tormented in this flame um that flame is not just fire like you know because i hope you know their physical bodies are in the earth here so what kind of fire will torture their spirit body it's not just the kind of your fire here spirits can walk through this fire are you getting me this is a strange kind of fire it's a fire that causes thirst when it destroys you it not only are you going through pain but it makes sure that there is thirst. It can absorb everything and cause you with the feeling of thirst. And it's very frustrating. Look at this guy. He didn't say let him send um, something to quench the fire. He was asking for a drop of water. And Abraham said, son, remember in your lifetime you received good things. This guy received evil. But now he's comforted and thou art tormented. 26. Now, divine revelation. Please listen. And beside this, there is a gulf between us so that they cannot pass here and there and there. We'll talk about this another time. Hades, Abraham's bosom, and so on and so forth. 27. Then he said, listen, I pray thee, therefore, Father, that thou would send him back to the earth. Are you seeing now? Send him back to the earth to my father's house. So let's see. See let's walk with what the bible says is that true do you believe the word of god you believe is the final authority and you believe it's a more sure word of prophecy so let's examine the word of god 28 for i have five brethren that he may testify unto them lest they also come into the place of torment so what was his request please come back to the earth with divine revelation abi go to my family and tell them ah i just came back from hell if they hear you their heart will melt and they'll change i don't want them to come here 29 what happened abraham said they have moses and the prophets let them hear them in other words it is not god's original strategy to bring people back from the world of the dead to come and bring revelation to inhabitants of the earth abraham was saying listen this is not a normal route of god's dealings with people to make them grow are you getting what i'm saying abraham said they have moses the law and the prophets they are they are preachers already they should listen to them verse 30 and he said nay father abraham but if one went on to them from the, from the dead he said what they will repent is that true 31 and he said unto them if they hear not moses and the prophets neither will they be persuaded though one rose from the dead listen so these teachings of people going and coming 
say they went to the dead and they came back with messages and they saw this and that and that the bible tells us the living and the dead have no relationship is it in your bible is it in your bible that there is something that separates the living and the dead it is appointed unto man to die once and after that the judgment i believe in the resurrection are you getting what i'm saying but by divination people's spirits have been invoked and a lot of things have happened can i tell you many of these places these people went to were certain realms in the spirit they had never been there please get what i'm saying some of these beings they encountered were not jesus christ they encountered spirits if you see a spirit in the realm of the spirit you will still need spiritual intelligence to relate with them because satan can appear as an angel of light jesus said it when he sent the 70 when they return he said i've seen satan's next strategy the next strategy is not to be a demon again he has translated himself as an angel of light and he's now going to go to pulpits as angel of light he was revealing to them a strategy he wasn't just telling them that satan has just fallen like that mm -mm. hallelujah satan saw that jesus could give his authority to men and they could legislate on his behalf he gave satan an idea of the next strategy he said why not i translate myself and come as an angel of light wear suit and start gathering these people rather than killing them let me use them so jesus began to tell the disciples i'm praying for you immediately i've seen something that will happen satan has now changed his state to become an angel of light and he's moving around as elders in churches moving around as overseers moving around as different things and recruiting men who are entering deception and delusion without knowing but we are this army that god is granting us light alongside many other remnants across the surface of the earth and we are the ones who will break the hold of darkness in the name of jesus christ hallelujah let me show you one more scripture these are the scriptures that talk about out of body experiences paul now the apostle himself second corinthians chapter 12 please let's rush one error we have to kick out of the body of christ the messages the people bring notice listen the bible says you shall know a tree by what is fruit that's whatever proceeds from that tree is that not true that means like who who said it i think it was mike that said everything god creates he leaves an imprint of himself if god gives you a word and is from him there will be something about his karagma on that word how many people tell me the truth have been comforted by the recent divine revelation teachings how many that you know there are so many people who have gotten into religiosity people locked up their businesses people packed out of school other people went somewhere people just killed a lot of things fashion designers stopped their businesses they are broke now they are suffering because they told them that anything anything at all oh if you see with it came from the the marine power if you understand satan you know that he does not have the power of creation he has an ability to mimic and corrupt that which is created are you getting my point now I, I, you can everybody has his personal belief and all of that i'm not but i'm just saying the reasons people are giving there is only one reason why people are in hell rejecting the gift of salvation that jesus brings are you getting my point oh a man of god did this this water was for bishop and he quickly drank it and when he was going out car hit him and he found himself that means all of us are going to hell you see that is killing what the bible calls the assurance of salvation so many people even preachers they don't know again whether they are saved or not hallelujah many people don't know whether they are saved or not and now the only way because that's the next thing i wanted to talk about is the false presentation of the gospel of holiness 
because there is the authentic gospel of holiness i tell you this one may is probably one of the biggest disasters that has happened to the church what has been taught to be the gospel of holiness is not what jesus taught are you getting my point now because a lot of people believe they are going to go to heaven based on the things that they have kept and avoided or done this and that no sir hallelujah you have no right to take a revelation and begin to yoke it on people based on your perception of truth you see let me tell you something the army that god is raising is an army that must remain as students we must create a posture that shows that we are students such that you are not ashamed to confront the revelations you have held as authentic when you see a higher light we must have that humility there's nothing embarrassing to accept that look i may not have seen it in this light i was blind but now i see the Bible talks about a man called Apollos. He was a learned man in Acts 18. The last few verses. And the Bible says, but you knew only the baptism of John. Is that true? And then Aquila and Priscilla came. They called him and they expounded to him more perfectly. And he was humble enough to receive. And then he now went to the temple and began to debate and argue intelligently. There are lots of people in the body of Christ who are under bondage. Terrible bondage. That innocently came, but is a product of the spirit of deception. For instance, there are many people who believe that if I, let me use a lady, come. If I give this lady a hug more, ah, this, this may be a problem. I've done something, I've compromised. It can cost me my salvation. And so because I have to shift to that religious mold. Listen, please. I'm not criticizing any, any church. Are you following me now? This is an apostolic teaching. It's a teaching to the body of Christ. Salvation is personal. Your dealings with God is personal. And it's time for us to kick the walls that are stopping us from entering the authentic experience of the kingdom. Because of this right now, the guy can sit down he does not yet have the ability to conquer lust but religious mold has made him to know or to feel that okay you must confirm and then people are looking at him and he looks like a sanctimonious brother whereas he's dying with masturbation because that's the only thing he can do and the devil says this is exactly what i want and then he uses it to bring condemnation and the guy gets up and before men he's wonderful and he's struggling and the sister is struggling and they go back and keep doing it there are all kinds of atrocities happening in our churches pastors sleeping with members many things are happening everybody carries a nice cloth and we come and hide under this demon called religion hallelujah that does not mean we'll be lawless this is the balance again because some other people in an attempt to address this just like me they tell people okay fine don't be religious don't do this dress anyhow do what you want to do say anything so you can be in the church i can be preaching and a lady can just come and i'll just hold her give her a nice peck and say sweet how you look sweet and you sit down those cabbages will be part of what will exit out of the body of christ there is a lot of another dimension of imbalance are you getting my point now we have all kinds of carelessness i believe that these things are not the things that determine salvation but then there, there are some things that just don't make sense a man of god comes hanging all kinds of chains around him with all kinds of rings tearing his jeans sagging them i mean i'm not talking of a guest some a little youth meeting or boot camp this is the, the, the default he's the overseer of the ministry he comes with his glasses comes and all that is nonsense it's a spirit of seduction hallelujah 
a woman comes on stage and she's preaching half of the message the brothers are not following their minds are they are just struggling lord i will make heaven i need to grow this is another balance so let me balance it very quickly because there are a group of immature revivalists arising in their bid to contend these things in the flesh are just telling people be as lawless as you can be that's a sign that we're out of the law there is a balance we're a disciplined army we're not idiots liberty is not rebellion hallelujah thank you jesus Second Corinthians 12 from verse 3 to 4. Did I say? From verse 3 to 4. Shibala katabrende kasibaladaba. Verse 3. And I knew such a man, Paul speaking. Listen, please. Whether in the body or out of the body, I cannot tell. God knoweth. For how that he was caught up into paradise and had what? unspeakable words which are not lawful for men to what is that in your bible that means all these ones that people go have you not seen that many times when the apostles see revelation he tells them seal this is for an appointed time but now people come back with every message this is deception are you getting my point now there are a few people however who we have judged their revelations based on the integrity of God's word. And we have found that their messages have brought healing and hope to the body of Christ. For such kind of people, we commend them and we endorse them. But even at that point, their word does not become the final, the final, uh, what do we call it now? This thing that they, yardstick. I cannot begin to run my ministry after Mary Baxter's vision. Are you getting my point? I've had a lot of visions. I live in the realm of visions. I can never run ministry just based on visions. Ask the leaders. Every time I see anything, no matter how authentic the experience is, the word of God must prove it, not confirm it. Prove it. Prove it. The Bible didn't say confirm all things. It said prove all things. If you are looking for confirmation, you will find it. You will find a scripture that endorses a man sleeping with a woman although they are not married. It's in the Bible. The Bible is a prophetic book. You can make it speak any language you want. The Bible did not say use the Bible just to confirm things. Prove it. Test the spirit behind it. everybody now is looking for confirmation so we get the revelation from all kinds of realms that's the reason why you go to native doctors and the rest you see bibles there because since it's bible you want they keep it there for you when it's time to do the spell they say lay your hands on the bible and swear that you will be faithful and you swear but they'll still do their demonic things and you will be convinced that because there was a bible there it was god because of this deception you don't use the Bible for confirmation. The Bible proves all things, yet nothing proves it. When I talk of Bible, I'm not just talking about the error of men. I'm talking about the edited spirit word that is given. Hallelujah. What do I talk about again? I want to show you something one other error in the body of christ is neglecting the reality of spiritual laws i said it everybody say it after me both inside and outside spiritual laws abound they exist they are real as real as physical laws look at me do you know why god did not kill cain when he sinned because he knew that there were spiritual laws at work are you getting my point and those laws will catch up with him are you following me now when you violate certain things and some things happen to you 
it's not like God brought it. There are laws. Are you getting my point? Jump from this building now, praying in tongues as you are jumping for no reason. It's not like they threw you to destroy you that you expect you expect the hand of God. Just jump from it. What do you think will happen to you? Because of the existence of a law. Now watch this. Regardless of that law, a plane still moves. Is that true? Does the movement of the plane stop the fact that there is that law? It means it's operating by another law that shields it. Are you getting what I'm saying? Curses are real. Yokes are real. Manifestations of witchcraft in lives and families are real. They are very real. Listen, these are spiritual laws. What light does for us is to tap into what Christ has done and exempt ourselves. Are you getting me? Let's look at one scripture and then we'll pray. That does it for today. Just one scripture. I want to show you a scripture. Psalm 64. Let's trace these activities of those we call familiar spirits. Every time I teach, it's always in my culture to try to bring balance. There is a lot of junk about deliverance, demonology, and so on and so forth. However, I believe that there is an accurate perspective that we can look at to gain understanding. Hear my voice, oh God. This was the psalmist praying by revelation. Preserve my life from the fear of the enemy too. Hide me from the secret counsel of the wicked. From the insurrection of the workers of iniquity. Verse 3. Hmm. Who wet their tongue like a sword. That means these guys speak certain things and bend their bows to shoot their arrows, even bitter words. Verse 4. He said that they may shoot in secret at the perfect. Suddenly they do shoot at him and fear not. Verse 5. He says they encourage themselves in an evil matter. They, com they commune of lying snares privately. They say, who shall see them? Six. They do what? They search out. Who are these people that search out? They go to an extent. Where did they write it? That they go back to archives and search out iniquities of families. Are you following me now? This is in your Bible. They search out iniquities. He say they accomplish a what? diligent search they are meticulous when god opened my eyes to this it surprised me are you getting my point now have you read that word blotting out every handwriting so there are handwritings correct there are ordinances the bible says they search out iniquities hallelujah maybe at another time i will continue this teaching of these angels that i told you because when they fell listen they wanted to translate themselves back to the angelic state they did not know that god had the power to stop them so in an attempt to translate themselves back they were stopped they are the ones who have become demons today are you getting me so they need material bodies to find expression this is the basis of traditionalists this is the basis of a lot of things that we celebrate in the rampant outbreak of the prophetic that we call word of knowledge you see it they search out i'm not saying everything is corrupt are you getting my point now but i'm telling you that many of these things Otherwise, how can a herbalist look at you? How many of you have seen these guys that scam and swindle people in a car? And sometimes they will give you an, they will take you to one baba, right? And give you an accurate word of knowledge. How did they know? Because they don't have the Holy Spirit. So there must be some spiritual system. They search out iniquities. 
it is on the basis of this search that Lucifer, Satan, the accuser of the brethren, are you getting me now? Based on these findings, this is what he reports. And he says, God, according to your justice, this is what has happened. That means there is a law that should follow this family. Are you getting my point? And suddenly you find out women are not getting married. People are not getting married. Things are not working. Nothing is working. Anybody comes to you for a relationship, what will happen to him in two weeks? Nobody will tell him. He will pack his load by himself and go. And you are wondering what in the world is going on. Listen, listen. It is demonic. Many of us and our loved ones are victims of these things. But they've told you, hallelujah, just believe. It's not there again. You say it's not there again. You went back. It's still there. This thing is following you. You see patterns. I told you this thing. Satan wants transgenerational allegiance. Many students, you are very brilliant. Like exam right now. You go to the class and you find out that you black out. In all sincerity, other people think you are lazy. You know you are not lazy. There is a puzzle somewhere you are trying to understand. Now you come to the ministers and they tell you, did you read? Yes, they say, all right, I speak over you. It is well. And demons just mock the men of God and say, look at how shallow. And the student goes back and gets the same kind of tragedy. But when there is light, darkness must bow. This is the reason why you are hearing testimonies of sudden admissions, sudden this and that. See, brothers and sisters, I taught you that every time you speak, the realm of the spirit will check what revelation you are standing on. Are you seeing why some people's words are not powerful? Because when you speak, the devil knows you don't even know what you are saying. You are just carrying the delusion of faith. And you are just saying, I speak. Leave this family now. Based on what? What is the spiritual intelligence that sponsors that statement? When you have it, there is light in your spirit and it is that light that will force that dimension of darkness that's why sometimes you can see as we are teaching the power of god just breaks out and demons are living or maybe during the miracle service these things are not magic it's a product of light are you getting my point as you're sitting under this teaching now a lot of things are suddenly coming in your mind are you getting me now it's now making sense to you why your father was walking although an elder in church he grew to a certain height and it fell and that's exactly what has been happening he went for deliverance and fell down he got up and the same thing has happened with that it has even gotten worse have you seen people who come and receive some miracles and go back and their families become worse it's a spiritual blackmail to discredit the ministry of the men of God so that they will say they got powers from darkness. Not everybody got power from that. Are you getting my point now? You see how complicated the body of Christ is at this point. That's why we need accuracy. Please don't miss the meetings because there is a, there is a construction there is a, we want to go back to this foundation what is responsible for the darkness in our lives nothing just happens brothers and sisters as you're seated right now you know that this word you are hearing is the deliverance of your family this word you are hearing some of us who are parents here and are seated we know that this is the puzzle behind the things that are happening hallelujah but it will take light brothers and sisters it takes spiritual intelligence during the monday counseling i was ministering to a lady and as soon as she came and i casted out the spirit and at once the lady just lay down and the lord opened my eyes at once and i saw the spirit in the realm of the spirit it was laughing and i said the lord rebuke you the protocol were here and the the lady jacked back up. Somebody would have said, thank you, Jesus. And he just gets up and says, ah, that's it. And the demons would say, Kai, men of God of these days, they are not powerful at all. Yeah. 
say after me the light of god is upon me taking away every darkness and by the power of the holy spirit i become an agent of healing prosperity deliverance and grace to all around me and my family members hallelujah this is what is responsible for many things in our families this is why you find out that certain tribes and certain geographical places are prone to certain attitudes we say these things do not happen but we are seeing it there is a spirit upon the continent of africa that is responsible for what is happening hallelujah you see people come from certain places you see people come from plateau state you see people come from kaduna state from kogi state from lagos from the river and areas you see patterns that are happening yet we say oh it, there's there's nothing wrong i'm okay just declare that i'm okay and you say i'm okay and the demon say i'm fine too i'm fine with you i like this revelation you're having i'm fine with it but when light strikes see there are many of you based on this revelation you will start calling home and your parents will start telling you what is this dream that i'm having what is, you will see that there are shiftings know that is a response to what is happening it's already happening in some families right now you are seeing it you something you just know you can't explain but you know that certain foundations these demon spirits are saying who is this who is this this is le a level of light that is notable and they they begin to walk but you see light does not beg darkness authentic light comes and comes to conquer hallelujah this is the mystery behind this healing of hiv and all of these things you are seeing when you understand them no man of god will boast and brag in himself because in all sincerity when you know this it's just a proper application of spiritual intelligence hallelujah it's like clapping for yourself because you took your bath you say what i'm so impressed that i can bath what is special about that you can clap for a baby because you say this is amazing ha ah, you bath yourself the child will say yes say clap for yourself and he claps now imagine that Sam comes to see me and I just said I, I finished Bapi and Sam will say boy am I impressed a time will come what we celebrate as power will take another dimension what men of God have camped around it will be ordinary people who will be doing it because of the higher dimensions of grace are you getting me time for miracle service we'll just say you go and bring those who you heal, delivered, prayed for, and come. We testify together and receive greater grace. Do you know the training you are receiving now is such that it puts you to work immediately? And your Jerusalem is your family. Anyone who is not concerned about his family is, so, is a sign that something is wrong with you. Bishop, a pretty lady with nobody to marry her getting into the 40s nobody to marry her people say it's just like that the ratio of men to women is so on and so forth what is all that but when you sustain spiritual intelligence you can say light be and it will become hallelujah praise the lord rise up on your feet let's pray i want us to take some time please pray as you pray tonight sudden things will begin to happen in your life please everybody participate in the prayer as you pray tonight something will begin to happen in your families you will begin to feel the spiritual shift the devil must give up on you this year and your family members hold hands together and begin to pray in tongues please instrumentalists help us hold hands together and just begin to pray in tongues. Please pray seriously. Zakatakatabalakatabrakatabaladaba. Rekatabratakatakosapatalabaka. 
prayer is a spiritual law it has nothing to do with convenience you're not filled with the holy ghost as we pray let the power of god come upon you that you begin to utter those mysteries please pray Rekete koto prakata balabala, mambro soto presko sekete, lekete koto balaba. You will contend until victory comes. You will contend. Rekete kete. Outside, make sure you are praying. Outside, make sure you are praying. Rekoto prakete leba kapata kata prakata balada bash. Rekoto broska pakata, pakata prakata leka, maka bresko prende kosteva. Every second tele boko shopre gele balaba. Mabra tosko pa ikekea, ebresko peke tele kotos, maka prakata le kotos shopre gele balaba. Make broske taliaba. Arise, arise, by light, by revelation, arise. Shake up darkness, shake up darkness. Rekete ko rekete rekete ka. Pray and say I'm changing. I'm changing. My status is changing. Rekete keleba. There's no more decline. I'm on my way to better days, to the life God designed for me. Hallelujah. The answer. The tragedy of my family is already unfolding. This age-long puzzle is opening. Rekete kete koko to balada bakada bara. Nambra kata balada bash. Rekete kere koso prekete. Come on, pray in the spirit. Activate breakthroughs in the spirit. You are praying out of the depth of revelation. Rekete kete kete prakata balada balada ba. Mam prakata prakete shekete. Rekete prakata balada bash. Rapo koso prakete. Rekete kebo shapariya ba. Mam prakete lebo koso prakete bosh. Please no looking at one another. Pray, pray, pray. Rekete bosh ko prakata balada ba. Your flesh may be weak, but pray is a sacrifice. Is a sacrifice. Is a sacrifice. Prayer is a sacrifice. It's not about convenience. It's about the higher revelation. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Prayer point number one. You are going to pray. Hallelujah. And you are going to say, Lord, I dispel darkness out of my life. Are you hearing me? You are going to say, Lord, by the light, whatever represents darkness in my life, it bows tonight. Lift your voice and pray. It could be sickness in your body. It could be a yoke of bondage. Satan is only as powerful as the darkness in us permits him. Pray. Let light shine. God, who had commanded light to shine out of darkness, had shined in our hearts to grant unto us the knowledge of the glory of God as seen on the face of Jesus. Let there be light. 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 Prophesy. Light. Light to my family. Light. Prophesy. Light. To your exams, light to your academics, the powers that be, they must bow tonight. 
kind of force of revelation. Man shall not live by bread alone. Man shall live by every revelation. Revelation brings life. It brings light. It brings power. Pray. Babylon is falling. That corrupt system. That secrecy of evil. That genetic code of wickedness. That is responsible for the life that people are living. The wickedness, the pain. Cause that system. That that one must fall by a road of a higher priesthood. This is not the ironic priesthood. Our confidence is tied to a higher priesthood after the order of Melchizedek. It's a priesthood of glory. It's a priesthood of power. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are still praying. You are going to mention every area of your life. One by one. And you are going to say, Lord, the chains, they are broken tonight. While we sing, play that song, break every chain. Many of you will be surprised at the testimonies you will have. These are not testimonies that are happening by mistake. You know how they are happening. So you can reproduce it in the life of others. Lift your voice. Chains. I prophesy. Be broken. Chains of delay. Chains of delay. Chains of barrenness. Chains of fear. Chains of failure. Let the glory of the Lord arise. Let the glory of the Lord arise. Chains. Chains of pornography. Chains of masturbation. Chains of wickedness. Chains of sickness. Chains of joblessness. Chains of failure. Chains of witchcraft. Break every chain. By the power of the blood of Jesus. Break every chain. We contend by revelation. We storm the gates of hell. We storm the gates of hell. By the power of light. We storm Babylon. We prophesy your doom in our lives. Babylon the great. Falling. Babylon the great. Falling. prayer points hallelujah hallelujah praise the lord please pair yourselves into two the bible says if any two shall agree as touching anything you are going to pray for your families right now this year we must carry our family members along listen listen pharaoh said i will let you go but leave the children and the animals moses said no way we are going together i can't go and allow my sister who will save them you can't go and let your loved ones die like that are you getting my point that prophetic light will shine until every member of your family is part of this you are going to pray confront every darkness in your family you know the darkness lift your voice and pray the darkness of witchcraft and culture i contend Come on, pray. There's no pretense in this place. Pray. Our family members have suffered this cycle of failure by the power of the Holy Ghost. We confront him, knowing that we have authority. We expose the doers of evil. We expose the doers of iniquity. We expose the spirit of death, the spirit of failure, that invisible manifestation of darkness that is responsible for death, 
for barrenness, for miscarriages, for failure. Pray that limitation of poverty, confront poverty, that spirit, that yoke, that devilish device that has been projected to your family that is responsible for your financial tragedy confront it it must bow to the power of light for the light shines in the darkness and the darkness cannot comprehend prophesy a recovery prophesy a recovery I call back opportunities for my family I call back I call back their spiritual sovereignty I call back their finances I call back the joy Hallelujah. One more prayer point and we're done. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're going to pray for Koinonia. We're going to say, Lord, let your light shine. People must be liberated. Are you hearing me? Let me tell you something. Listen. Hear me inside and outside every one of you who comes for this meeting your coming alone is a miracle are you hearing me if you know the powers of darkness that if they had their way would stop you from hearing what you are hearing ask the people that come for counseling 90 percent of them tell you the morning for counseling something stops them or an accident and they almost capsize the devil hates light he loves argument he loves religion but this year we are storming the gates of hell are you getting my point a fearless generation there are things that must be recovered there is a destiny the soul of the nation that we must recover but it must start from us and our families this is why we invest time to pray we know the kind of ministry God has given us that's why we pray are you getting my point that's why we have a strong and healthy prayer department we are not carried away by success we are not carried away by crowd we are not carried away by rema listen when god commits to you the transformation of the destinies of men you must take it seriously we are going to pray for koinonia we are going to say light shine shine let the works of evil be exposed let believers be empowered by the light of God's word. Let this place remain Bethel, the place of bread, the place of light. We will pay the price, whatever it takes to access the depths of the spirit. We will pay the price. We will pay the price for the sake of destinies. Pray. Our heavens remain open in the name of Jesus. This remains a place of breakthrough, a place of signs, wonders, deep mysteries of the kingdom. Our messages go far. They cause me five hours in campuses, in families, in cities. Let the angel of the Lord that goes with our messages, we command that the angels of God arise for our sake. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please lift your hands. Before I make the altar call, let me speak over your life. We are committed to being very serious 
I tell you, I was praying and I was telling God, I said, Lord, find seriousness in us. There's no room for a joke. We will keep being serious. We will keep contending. While men slept, that means if you remain awake, you can be a pure breed indeed. The Bible says, Awake thou that sleepest, and Christ shall give thee light. Awake. Awake. I want to pray. As I pray, I'm going to command every dead spiritual life, every dead prayer life, whatever has killed your spiritual fervency in the name of the son of the living god i pray for you that a fire will come upon you and reignite your prayer life in the name of jesus christ whatever has killed your prayer life i confront it now i command those dry bones arise Whatever has killed your appetite, let the fire of the Holy Ghost plant an appetite right now, right now in you for scripture. I impart the spirit of revelation upon you by the power of the Holy Ghost. You will have a passion to study scripture. You will get back your concordance. You will study scripture in the name of Jesus. I pray for access to light, access to the deep things of the spirit. In the name of Jesus, access to realms of power, realms of power, realms of breakthrough. Realms of revelation. May your words be seasoned with fire. You will begin to speak from today. And fire, fire, fire. I prophesy it. I prophesy it. The Bible says from his mouth, a double-edged sword came out. I release that sword. Let it enter you and make you a living wonder. Let your communications be deep in the name of Jesus. Those who are weary spiritually, those who have come to the end of themselves, is not backsliding. You've just tried. There is nothing else to sponsor a fresh hunger. I pray that tonight God will show you something that can keep you awake studying all night that God will show you a mystery man de caparica may God remove the veil from your eyes may you see what mortal men don't see may you hear sounds of the spirit I pray for utterance for you the capacity to communicate spiritual things accurately it's not about oratory it's a spiritual quality that helps you translate spiritual things to the understanding of men receive it in the name of Jesus I command every sick body be healed right now be healed every sickness here be healed you will walk away free tonight in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Lift your hands. Let me pray for your exams. Whether you're writing exams or not, whether you're a student or not, lift your hands. You can connect. It's a corporate anointing. Hallelujah. There are people who have struggled with their exams. They've read and read right now as you are here. You don't even know if you are ready for your papers. But you know you are serious. Let's see the power that will stop you these exams. I pray for you. That angel that came to give Daniel understanding. He said, and I am come to give thee understanding. Father, I pray 
according to the measure of grace that has been given unto me let your people 